All right, guys, just want to give you a warm welcome here uh, for today's workshop session here with Mark Petrino. We will be starting here in a couple minutes, so just hang in there tight, and uh, we're about to get this started, guys.
All right, everybody, welcome to today's workshop here with Mark Petrino, Chief Educator at Benzinga Trading School. And uh, we're ready to get this started, guys. So I see you guys are talking about a couple of tickers, but let's uh, put in the chat where you are tuning in from. If you're tuning in from New York, from Florida, from Cali, from Europe, let us know where you're from. Sweden, Boston, Germany, Oregon. We always got somebody from Germany. Always. Fast I don't know if it's the same today, guy. Rodrigo. What? It's what a was fast that? Fast chat today, Rodrigo. Yeah, these people are pumped. Everyone's extra chippy today. Yeah, it's definitely a good Monday here. Crazy market today. Somebody Cameroon. here was. That's the first time I've seen a Cameroon person on a webinar. Hawaii. Tampa, shout out Bucks. Yeah, we got people from all over, all over the globe. It's really fun to see everybody taking an interest in trading and wanting to become a better trader, right? That's what this is all about. Yes, for everybody asking, if you are uh, attending today's session, you will get a recording. That's correct. Just if, if anybody else is asking, just let them know. All right, guys. So, all right, South Africa, this keeps coming. All right, let's keep 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 rolling, guys. Let's see if we can get a very unique spot. Um, Romania. Okay. I don't know if you've seen that one, Harvey, before. We've seen Romania before. We'll be starting soon, everyone. Mark Petrino is entering the house. <laughs> Mirko is asking what's the question again. The question is, where are you tuning in from? Where are you located at watching us today in this beautiful session on a beautiful Monday? And OK, all right, so we get it. You guys are all over the place. All right, awesome. Now, let me know what is the one market theme that you think is is running the markets. You think it's inflation? think it's a supply chain, a mix of both? What is the one thing in the market that you think is, is impacting stocks right now? Rates? Let us know in the chat. Let's see what you guys are thinking. Let's see where the majority of the people are with this. Okay, let's go over a couple of these. And I think it's really all of them, to be honest. Um, but they kind of all lead to the same thing here with the inf inflation side. All right, so inflation, FOMO, supply chain, JP, treasury, and market makers. Inflation, of course, yeah, it's, that is the depreciation. Problems yeah, in China. Yeah, that's you got a educated yeah. bunch here today Rodrigo. no they've been working at it i'm proud you know a lot of these guys are, are members of the trading school so you can see they're definitely getting ahead so right there you got the problems in china and makesh mahesh you're talking about problems in china and then akel right below is like supply chain those two are connected my friend. yeah he, he's a good yeah. trader <laughs> it's my understanding he's he's really early in many trades <laughs> let's see COVID. I think I don't, uh, Mark Petrino's in the house as well. Is he? All right. If 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 Mark is in the house, um, there he is, the man himself. Okay, I hey see guys. him there. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can wow. hear you. And All right, cool. Let's ask the audience. Maybe everyone in the chat, drop a one if you can hear and see Mark Petrino. <laughs> Oh, there, yeah, cool. there we go. Looks like we got a lot, a lot of people. people I think already know. Yeah, they all, some of these already know. I think a lot of you guys are students, right? I mean, let us know if you guys are actual students here, because I know we got a bunch here. Yeah, Mark, if you want to uh, share your screen, then everyone can uh, 
uh, get ready for what you're about to teach them today. So there, there are a couple of trading school students here, which is awesome. There's, uh, which there's is great. A yeah, because they, they can talk to how great Mark is as an educator. So, well, let's not get and ahead for of ourselves. You, if so. you're not a student, then uh, you might have something to help you become a student. So, all right, can you guys all see this um, lesson one I put up here? Yeah, before we tune in though to the presentation, Mark, um, just want to get a quick, let's do just a brief overview here because uh, some people here might not know. Uh, your background, your experience. So if you can just let's start by, you know, uh, letting everybody know your background in Wall Street and finance and, your, you know, CMT, all that stuff. All right. Well, that goes under here why this class is different. Um, you know, and I, I hate to self-promote. It's kind of against my nature. But I think that, um, you know, I have something good to bring here because I look at a lot of these other trading schools and trading courses. And to be perfectly frank, most of them are overly complex uh they're taught by people that have never really seen a bear market i mean if anyone started trading within the last 10 years they've never seen a bear market you know they saw the covid crash but that came right back um so i have a lot of experience unfortunately that only comes with age but you know <laughs> i've been there um so you know i worked for mario gabelli and then i also worked for stephen cohen i was a head trader at three different institutional money managers and um, I think one of the main things about this class that makes it different is that, um, you know, I have real concrete, real life world in the institutional or real life trading experience in the institutional world. The other thing is that we apply this stuff to the markets in real time. You know, we're a class. Uh, I'm my idea is not to teach you what I do, but my idea is to teach these students what they can do to develop a system or an approach that works for them. Because what works for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for someone else. We all have different personalities. Uh, we all have different eyes. Like if you have a really passive personality and you're trading a really aggressive system, um, it's probably not going to work out so well. You know, a passive person is more likely to do well with a system where they don't trade that much, they kind of hang on the sidelines, they look for longer term trades. A more aggressive personality person might be more in and out, trading a lot of times a day, trying to scalp a little profit here, a little profit there. One way is not better than the other way. Um, what is important is that you need to do something that fits your personality. So in the class, what I do is I talk about fundamentals, right? We don't do anything really crazy, but we talk about um, you know fundamentals. So let me just go to what we call our fundamentals. And these are our classes. So the first class is what I'm taking. Uh, this is the presentation for the first class is what you're looking at now. So we just talk about my philosophy. Um, you know, trading does not need to be overly complicated. It can be based on logic, common sense, and reason, and using simple indicators. These are the fundamentals. We focus on what are important levels, what are the important trends, what is momentum, what patterns are worth paying attention to, investment psychology and risk management, how to look at the broader markets with sentiment, and investment strategies and trading systems. So these are the eight classes. And the way the, the course works is you don't just take the eight classes and then we say, see you later, good luck. We talk about the classes in the morning, we go over the lecture. Like for instance, today was the introduction and philosophy. Tomorrow is levels. So we are going to talk about how certain levels are more important than others in the stock market. Um, so tomorrow's class is on lessons, levels. We're gonna talk about this. Then we're going to look into the actual market and see if we could figure out which levels are important, which levels traders should be paying attention to, which levels um, are kind of meaningless. Um, we're gonna focus on trends, because stocks are either moving up or down or sideways. Momentum is um, the speed of a trend or how powerful a trend is. Patterns can show a supply and demand dynamics. Psychology is something that most investors don't worry, spend too much time with. Um, and that's why they get wiped out, because um, they guess. 
Uh, so we talk about strategies and trading systems. So now I just want to bring you up before we get too far along. Um, I just want to show you something that we just did as a class uh, where we were able to make a good profit. I'm going to explain to you exactly why we did it. Um, you know, we talked about it within the class. It's all in the lectures. If you listen to them, you'll be able to hear. You know, I'm not looking through hindsight here, um, showing you something that's perfect. I'm showing you something that we did together and a lot of the students were able to make a good amount of money off it. So anyway, I noticed that Verizon went into this free fall here, all right? This was, uh, let's say two weeks ago, free fall. You know, this is a big stock, big market cap, very liquid. This is the type of thing you see on maybe a meme stock or a penny stock. You don't really see this on these big names like Verizon. So, we see this big move. No one really knows why. There's no news on the tape. Um, I listened to the company's conference call on their earnings. They didn't mention it. So when you have a big move like this with no news, we expect a reversion or you know something bringing it back to the mean. As traders, we are always looking for stuff that's out of balance. We don't want stuff that's in equilibrium because it doesn't move. So we had this big sell-off with no pair of news that put it on our watch list. So we put this on a radar screen. So on October 13th, we were watching the daily trend. This is the one day chart of October 13th. And we could see the stock opened around 11 or 11.30. The hourly trend broke and the stock reversed. Well, that's when we made the call or I suggested the students get in. That ended up being right here. This was the low day of October 13th. So a lot of the students got in, most of them bought options, some bought the stocks, just below 51. So then we got the reversion we expected. Now, how do we pick a target price? A lot of students or beginners have a hard time deciding where should I sell it? Where should I buy it? And of course, that's very confusing if you don't know the markets. So we saw that this level here, 54, was support, all right? A lot of times in the markets, and this is something we'll cover in our lessons, um, our levels lesson tomorrow, is levels that were resistance can become, I'm sorry, levels that were support can become resistance. This happens because of buyer's remorse. A lot of the people that bought the stock here regret doing so when the stock fell lower. So they decide to sell, all right? And they don't wanna take a loss, so they decide to place their sell order at the same price they bought the stock at. This way they can get out of break even. So we anticipated that there would be some resistance around the $54 level. So we decided to place our target just below that, around 5370. So a lot of the students went in um, just under 51 and we got out uh, around 5370. Now, you know, I'm not showing you this to talk about how great we are or anything like that. What I'm showing this to you is to show how it doesn't need to be that complicated. We focus on levels, we focus on trends, we focus on momentum. We had this big move here, no apparent news is driving it. So whenever this is over, it's gonna revert. Now, my guess is that some big fund somewhere blew up and they had to bail out of their stock. That's why they sold it all the way down. Cause if they're blowing up, it means they need to give money back to their investors or their clients. So they'll sell what they need to sell. So anyway, I think this is a good example, um, relatively in real time, because this is only over the past week or two. Um, but I just wanted to show uh, you what this class is all about. You know, we don't have like some secret system we're going to teach you that you can become a zillionaire, or, you know, drive around in a Lamborghini after a few weeks. Um, in the real institutional trading world, this is what people focus on, which levels are important which trends are important. You know, you'll notice there's no Fibonacci ratios on this chart. There's no Elliott waves. There's no Gantt theory. It's just common sense. The market got knocked out of whack for some reason we don't know. We watched it. When it started to revert, we jumped in. So, you know, at this point, I can ask a question, which I know would light us up with ones if you're anything like our students. Um, but how many people out there have bought a stock the stock went down, they say they want out, but they don't want to lose money. So they offer their shares at the same price that they bought at. 
So if you have done that, why don't you throw a one in the chat? And uh, for and I would be willing to bet there's a lot of people out there because it's a very common mistake. Um, so as, if you've had done it before, don't worry about it. You're not the first, you won't be the last. Um, but this is uh, what we do in this class. We just focus on basic fundamentals of supply and demand and we apply it to uh, the actual markets. Right, and that, and we'll we will get into the trading school a little bit more in detail uh, once we continue on the workshop. So for now, Mark, uh, maybe you can pull up your charts there. Let us know uh, your overall market, like a market overview of what you're looking at in the markets, what's catching your eye, what's not, and um, you can oh. give us a little bit of an explanation of the market, what you're looking at now in the trading school. Okay, let me just. I think I knocked you off here. Let me just go back here. All right. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot uh, to update you guys. Remember last time we met here, Mark, we were talking about Netflix. Um, it was the pick that we gave the students. Uh, you remember I that? One? I don't know. Man. I, to me, it all kind of blends together. But um, yeah, yeah, I do. I do remember looking at Netflix. We were we were talking about Netflix when it was, and and the people that were here, they know that because we were talking about Netflix. Um, basically, it was at that six thirty dollar level. And I think a couple of days after we reviewed it, it shut up all the way to 680. And, you know, I'm an, I'm a, I, I love Netflix. I, I own the stock, but um, it's really good to see that, you know, helping students out and, and, you know, showing them the technicals and all that. It's definitely a continuation there. Yeah. And the thing is, 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 you know, Rodrigo, it's, you know, there's all these systems out there or classes or books where, you know, everyone's a genius in hindsight. No one's going to put a chart in a book and say, oh, here's where I was wrong. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, we, we don't make any promises. We're not always going to be right. But I think for students that really want to learn about how the markets work and dispel some of the myth, um, because, you know, there's so much erroneous reporting in the news and there's a lot of misunderstanding. Um, but I think by applying this stuff in the real time, it's the real way to um, have students learn about trading. I mean, you know, you could... Um, I don't know what's a good analogy. Like you, you know, you could uh, like I see your uh, Muhammad Ali picture in the background there, right? It's like you could go to the gym and work out on a heavy bag all you want, right? Or you could lift weights. You think you're a great boxer, but until you actually step in the ring with someone else, you're not going to really learn what it's all about. So I think that's one of the advantages of this class, and that's why I think students so far have been so enthusiastic about it. So this is Netflix. Um, let me just bring up FedEx because I put this on the radar screen today as a potential trade, and I will explain why, All right? So we haven't got into it yet, but this is just something that we are watching. And when I say we, I'm talking about the class. Right now, I'm not um, putting any of my own capital into this these ideas because I don't want my... Um, perception to be influenced by emotions so you know as we move down the road that'll that'll change but when i say we i'm really just talking about uh the students but so we can see what happened here right now we focus on important levels in the class what are important levels levels where the stock makes a turn so we can see back here in january fedex found support around 235 right so the stock rallied way up to about 320 came back down, had this big move lower, and this is what we call a gap. When a stock trades, when the stock goes from this price to this price with no trading, it appears on the chart as a gap. So that's what we see here. And there's an old saying on Wall Street, what gaps up or what gaps down gaps up. So now this 235 level has turned into a resistance level. And on Friday and today, when FedEx got there, it slammed into this wall of sellers or resistance. Why is there resistance at 235? Well, there's resistance there because it was a support level, right? Certain levels are more important than others. If you take this class, you're going to hear me say that, you know, till it's nauseating. But when you get it drilled into your subconscious and you're making money over it, you'll be glad you did. So, Here's what happens, at least from a traditional sense. Investors that bought the stock here were happy when it went higher because they were making money. But then it fell through it. And now guess what? 
all these investors who bought here who still hold it are now losing money. So a lot of these investors say, <clears throat> this was a bad decision. I want out. I don't want to own the stock anymore. So what happens is they place their sell orders at 235. And if there's enough of them, it turns into resistance. And that's what happens here. So this is our setup, what we call every trading model should have different components. One is the setup, which is the get ready, then get ready. Two is the trigger, which is go execute the trade. And three is the exit strategy. Now, I would be willing to bet that a lot of the people that are listening to this uh, right now um, have lost a lot of money because they guessed. They don't have a plan. And a plan doesn't need to be this, you know, deep, complex, uh, you know, strategy that was all worked on by PhDs with 190 IQs. We just need a simple set of parameters to take the emotion and the guessing out of the framework or out of the process. All right, so we're back to resistance level. So now we have our setup. The setup says, all right, pay attention, watch, get ready. So now we're watching and we're getting ready. Now, if this 235 level breaks, there's a chance this stock refills this gap really quickly and gets back up to around 250. Why? Well, think about this, right? The people that bought there are selling here. They have buyer's remorse, right? They bought here, the stock goes lower, they're remorseful, they want to sell it. But now let's think about this gap. When the stock traded down really fast, it literally spent no time trading at levels from 250, say down to 235. So there wasn't enough time in this range for a lot of buyers to buy the stock. There were not buyers being run over because the stock just didn't trade there. Like around 240, no one bought it. The stock closed at 251 and reopened the next day at 233. So no one could have bought it. So what does that mean? Well, you're not going to have a large group of people trying to sell in here. You're not going to have those remorseful buyers selling that created the resistance here. So there's a good chance that in this zone here, there's a lack of supply or a limited amount of sellers. So what happens? Well, buyers, if they want to entice a seller into the market, they have to bid higher prices. And that could take the stock back up. And that is why gaps refill. So we have a potential trading idea here based on very simple trading fundamentals. Um, we have a level that was re support became resistance. Ooh, would you like to trade and learn with Mark Petrino? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> All right, everyone say yes on that poll. Um, so the same principle of why support became resistance is the same principle that tells us why a gap would refill because on this gap down there weren't any investors buying it who are now upset that they bought it who are going to be offering their stock so this is an example of where a gap could refill so you know no guarantee it works out but it's just something that's on the students radar screen now that we're watching and it just is an illustration of fundamental dynamics in the market. Well, it was support can become resistance. If it's a level where there wasn't support, there may not be resistance and we could get a gap back up. And this is something that we're doing every day in, in the trading school, pretty much with Mark Petrino. So I just uh, shot out a poll there. Would you like to trade and learn with Mark Petrino? So we have 99% on the yes so if you would like to trade and learn with Mark Petrino, I know a lot of you guys are asking about the trading school. So uh, Mark, let me just show them really quick what it, what it is. Sure. Okay. Um, let me get the screen here pulled up for you guys. So if you definitely want to trade with Mark Petrino and learn with Mark, okay, I'm going to show you the trading school, which is really where we, where we hang around all day. We have classes Monday to Friday. Um, Friday, we do a recap, but Monday to Thursday, basically you're looking at a new chapter here. So, uh, this is the homepage. This is where you can uh, pretty much catch up with all of the upcoming classes, Introduction and Philosophy, October 25th. Everything is labeled there for you as well. And the Q&As, the Q&A sessions are also recorded. So everything is recorded there for you as well. And as you can see, we even have office hours there for you to use those. Whenever we do have a live class, you just pop in here. We have a chat room and everything there. 
And basically we go live on the classes, the video library. This is where you'll find all of the recordings and up uploads of the Q and A's. As you can see, these are all the classes. My favorite one is the investment psychology. I think psychology is very interesting, especially because, you know, greed and fear kind of run the market. So it's a very interesting approach, especially from Mark Petrino's perspective, having traded in some of the most known legendary uh, funds with Jabelli and with Cohen. Uh, but as you can see here, it's pretty well organized. Uh, you do, every video is there. Everything is uploaded. And uh, you have your chat rooms here, which I cannot not mention, of course, right? You got office hours there, of course. And uh, you have our trading um, chat room here with Mark. And this is basically where Mark is talking about many different trades that he's putting in, getting in, getting out. So this is also a live trading service that you guys can attend. And uh, if you have any feedback, you just click here. And anything that you might want us to add or look into, we're always looking forward to improving the platform for you guys. But from what I'm seeing here, 99% of you guys want to learn and uh, earn with Mark. So feel free to join the school. I'll drop, I'll drop the link here one time. And uh, we can get back uh, to the class. Uh, I'm sorry, to the workshop now, Mark, if you want to... Uh, just take over the screen, go back. Uh, okay. where we were. Yeah, and, it, and it's for one year, Geraldine. Yep. Okay, so that is um, FedEx. Um, another thing that we have on our radar screen now for a potential short, or if, a, if you're an options trader, um, a potential buy of a put is Home Depot. All right, now, when I look at Home Depot, what I see is it's, <laughs> all right, who said no, man? We had two people said no. All right, well. Probably Harvey. <laughs> Playing a joke. All right, so anyway. Now, again, these are not trades. I'm not telling you to go out there and do it now. What we have is the setup, like getting to that resistance level for um, FedEx is what we call a setup. A setup is like, if you're on the starting line, it's like, get ready, get set. Those are your setups. That's pay attention. Something is going on here. What we call a trigger is the, sig is the signal to actually enter the trade. So Home Depot caught my eye because we can see it's very overbought. This lower part of the chart here is what we call an RSI momentum indicator. Momentum is a measurement of how far a stock has moved in a particular period of time. When a stock gets, gets um, really bought up or really smacked down, it's trading above or below what would be its typical trading range. So if it's above it, we get, it gets our attention because that's going to attract sellers into the market and they can knock it down. They're going to be anticipating a reversion to the mean or a sell-off. Similarly, if something gets really beaten down, it could be oversold. And if something gets oversold, there's a chance it could come back. So even if you don't sign up for the class, if you remember these two takeaways, the time you're spending now is well spent. Overbought markets tend to sell off. Oversold markets tend to rally. That is especially the case if they get to resistance or support. So an overbought market that gets to resistance tends to sell off. An oversold market that gets to support tends to rally. So Home Depot is overbought, right? We see that. I also looked on the five-year chart at the weekly ratings, and we could see that Home Depot from a weekly point of view, this is a five-year chart, is the most overbought that it has been since January of 2018. The last time it was this overbought, it was trading around $205. And within a few months, it got down to $175. So these are our setups for Home Depot. It's on the radar screen. Are we going to make the trade? No, not yet. We are going to wait for a reversion for, you know, for the put, if you have a short strategy. So we can draw on our trend line here. So we have our setup. We're overbought, but we don't have our trigger yet. The trigger is if this red trend line breaks and gets, meaning if it gets violated. 
See, everything in a chart is a graphical illustration of the supply and demand dynamics that are occurring in a market. An uptrend, which is, you know, this trend line is subjective. I drew it in, but I'm confident that with practice and some experience, the people that are listening to me will be able to draw on trend lines. Um, so this is a graphical illustration that the bulls are in charge. If this line gets crossed, that could be, a, think about it, if this line gets crossed, it'll mean the stock has started to move sideways. So that could be an illustration that the bulls are about to lose control. So now we have a setup, right? We have a stock that's overbought, it's in an uptrend, what do we do? We put it on our radar screen. If this trend line breaks, or when this trend line breaks, breaks because it eventually will, then we look at it as a potential short trade. Um, one of the things the students, a bunch of the students were able to profit from over the last week is this healthcare sector. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry. I wanna put an XLV. We spent a lot of time looking at these sectors because this is where we can get ideas. The S&P 500 consists of 11 sectors. So one of the things we do is we can go over all the sectors and we look for sectors that are overbought or oversold. And if we see that, then we delve farther into the sector. Like a bunch of the students here um, made money, not just on XLV, but on some of the stocks within the sector. So this is XLV. This is the healthcare sector. So stock was oversold. And remember what I just said. If a stock is oversold and it gets to support, there's a good chance it rallies. Now, you may want to write that down. If a stock is oversold and gets to support, there's a good chance it rallies. I know people that have made successful careers pretty much just trading that. If something gets oversold, it gets to a support level, and it rallies. That's just what happened here. So we see this clear resistance level around 125. Stock rallies, goes lower. Why did we think there would be support around 125? And we did. I mean, we followed this in the class after this big sell-off. Um, well, levels that were resistance may become support, right? We talked about that. Well, we talked about buyer's remorse. Um, now this is seller's remorse. People sold here only to watch the stock go higher. They decide they made a mistake and they want to buy it back. So they place their buy orders at the same price they sold at. This is our RSI momentum indicator. You can see right here, we became oversold, which is right on this day here, the last day of the sell-off. So we have simple principles here. I'm not talking about regression analysis or Fibonacci this or that, or you know, triple Lindy patterns or anything complicated. We have a situation where a stock is, or an um, ETF in this case, is selling off. It gets to a level that we think there's going to be support because it was a resistance level and it's oversold. Oversold stocks that get to resistance tend to rally. So we drew, we drew in our downtrend line. And remember, this is a, a graphical illustration that the bears are in control. When this line breaks, it shows the bulls may be taking over. Just like up here, when the line breaks, it showed the bears were taking over. So here's our setup. We have an oversold ETF that gets to support. We don't want to get into it just yet. We want to make sure the support holds. So we wait to see if this downtrend line breaks. Sure enough, that's what happens. And a lot of the students um, got into XLV uh, right around here this 127-ish level. Now you might say, well, you know, why would you pay 127 when you could have bought it for 125? Well, we don't want to be overly concerned with always getting the best price. That's like a golfer always trying to get a hole in one. Yeah, I mean, it's great if you get a hole in one, but in the real world, it just doesn't work out that way. We want to understand that as traders, it's not about being right. It's about making money, right? So if you bought here at 127 and now it's up at 132, you're making money. We don't need to worry. Well, you could have bought it a day before or a couple of points lower. 
this is why we have a trigger because there's a good chance. Well, there's a chance that had this thing trended lower, it could have broken the support and kept going. So this trigger, when it crosses this downtrend line is what tells us get in. All right, we're at support and we're oversold. Those are your setups. Get ready, get set. So we're on the, the starting line here. We're getting ready, we're getting set. When XLV crossed this uh, trend line, that's her trigger. That's the go. That's what made a lot of the students buy XLV right here. And as you can see, it's worked out um, well so far. So this is another thing that um, you can see, I think it's in the, in, in the trading chat, but it's another simple idea that students were able to make money off of because we're focused on trends, levels, and momentum. It doesn't need to be complicated. So we can see that, you know, right here and the students made a lot of money or some of the students did. Um, you know, it, a lot of people think that there is this like secret system that these great traders like Steve Cohen or Mary Gabelli have, um, you know, but there isn't, you know, there's no secret indicator that's always going to be right. If there was, it would have been figured out by now. And some of these AI funds or quantitative hedge funds are literally spending tens of millions of dollars on, you know, hiring PhDs out at NASA and, you know, these guys that are these super geniuses with these 180 IQs trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to work? How can I beat the market? Well, guess what? It has not been done yet. All right. Some of them do well for a while, um, but then they end up not doing well. Uh, I mean, think about it. Four years ago, all anyone ever talked about was AI. You know, artificial intelligence is going to take over the market. I don't even remember the last time I heard about someone talking about AI taking over the market. It's like that discussion died about two years ago. Why? Because all those AI funds that seem so promising, because they, you know, could look at more parameters than another fund, you know, their performance sucks. I mean, a lot of them have blown up. A lot of them are way behind the S&P. Because they don't have flexibility, they don't change as we go on. You know, the market changes, and we need to um, change as well. So this is another idea, or I'm sorry, another trading idea that just came from simple, common sense, logical parameters about the market. Mark, and I know there was a. Maybe we can give all the folks here a, a, <laughs> an update because I know that. We've been doing these workshops, educational workshops for quite some time. And, you know, there's a lot of OG uh, trading school members here. You remember uh, when we were talking about oil pretty much bouncing at 60 and uh, that rally that we saw in energy and financials. Um, you know, I, I know you want to be humble and everything, but, you know, you're pretty good calling these shots, Mark. And uh, a lot of people were just asking for an update since we've, they've been with you on the trade for since pretty much you, you call the bottom there at 60. All right. Well, this is um, <clears throat> this was why we called the bottom around, you know, 62 ish. And this was a weekend. All right. This is um, this is August 20th, which was a Friday. And this is August 23rd, which was a Monday. And I believe we had a boot camp or I'm not sure. It was either Saturday or Sunday. So it was right at the end of this day. And I talked about, all right, you know, this is probably a good time to go long oil. Why? Because, you know, I had a dream or something, you know. <laughs> no, that's not why. The reason why is it had reached a level that had been support. See back in here, May, it was support. It was also oversold. This RSI indicator here shows oversold conditions. So remember what we talked about. Oversold means something is at an extreme below what would be its usual or typical range. What else did we say? Oversold markets that get to support tend to rally, all right? write it down. Um, oversold markets that get to support tend to rally. So we see oil trading down. We look back, we see it's getting close to support. We see it's oversold. That tells us, well, there's probably a good chance this thing is going to rally. So that's why back then on August, you know, over the weekend, we said it's probably a good time to buy oil. And it turns out that it has been. And since then, oil, um, 
you know, has gone from 62 to 84. You know, I think it's going to keep going. We'll blow right through 100, in my opinion. Um, but, all right, so I just did something where I shouldn't have done it. I just said, I think oil is going to go to 100. Well, you know what? I, that's me having an opinion, and I shouldn't have that opinion. So I need to check myself on that. I need to let oil tell me what it's going to do. I don't want to guess what it's going to do. And oil certainly isn't going to listen to me. So while this trend is in, is in uh, intact, let's keep going. You know, maybe we'll get to 100. But if it gets really overbought and this trend line breaks when the stocks are, when oils are like, say, 95, well, then maybe it won't get to 100. So I guess just by speaking contemporaneously here, I showed you what could be a problem in myself, which I just caught. Um, but because I've been doing this for so long, I know to catch it. You, by me saying, oh, I think oil is going to go to 100, that's kind of just you know pulling it out of the air. I'm not letting oil tell me what it's going to do. But as long as we're in this uptrend, oil tells us, well, stay long. Um, when it got down here, oil told us we're at support and we're oversold. So you know, it could move higher. Now, a lot of the people listening out there, Rodrigo, probably are saying, well, I don't trade futures. I don't trade oil. What is this to me? Well, right, right. Energy stocks follow oil, right? So we, um, you know, yeah. one of the buy recommendations we put out was on British Petroleum, or what is now called um, BP, but it used to be called British Petroleum. So anyway, look at this. Now we're going to go back to our important level analysis, and I mean, you know, this should really kind of blow you away if you're into the markets because how is it that BP got to 28.45 in June of 20. And then within pennies in June of 21, it stopped at the same level. You know, this is stuff that like us chart geek, geeks look at. But if you think about it, it's really kind of astonishing. Like if you ask an academic or a fundamental analyst to explain this to you, they couldn't explain it. Like, why is the company here have the exact same valuation as here? But anyway, for someone who doesn't trade futures, you can gain exposure to oil by purchasing certain stocks that trade oil or in the oil industry. So when this broke out around, you know, when it was around 2880 or whatever, that's when we put our buy on it. And you can see that in the chat room. Um, and, you know, now the stock is up, you know, considerable amounts since then, you know, and over, I don't know, what is it, 10, 5, 8% or, you know, something like that. So one of the other things we talk about in the class too is, if something is going on in a macro environment, like here, oil, like how can someone who doesn't trade futures get exposure to it? So this is uh, one of the things we like here, you know, getting getting into a stock that tracks oil. Yeah, and this was actually one of the safe stocks that you're in, because I know a lot of more, I mean, I don't want to call them YOLO, but like uh, other type of oil companies that are not as big as BP, obviously, and Chevron, that you know, they have a lower market cap, so obviously you're going to have a little bit more of an overreaction to that. Um, and uh, Geraldine is saying, just want to read a quick comment here. If you're new to trading or don't have charting system, Pro is priceless. It incorporates trading view, which would cost you for the upscale version. Yep, yep. So uh, for those that don't know, Benzinga Trading School includes Pro. Um, it includes Pro, just for you guys to know. All right, Rodrigo. So you just gave me something to put on our watch list. It was Chevron. I have not looked at this. All right. So this is Chevron. And I mean, it's a similar chart to BP. But whereas BP has broken out already, it doesn't look like Chevron quite has yet, but it looks like it's about to. And when I say break out, I mean clearing these former resistance levels. So we could see that um like back here chevron peaked in, this is april or may i'm sorry around 113 and it's just kind of working its way above this here so this is something i'm going to put on our radar screen and i'm going to talk to the students about it tomorrow because if oil keeps going higher this is another stock that's going to keep going higher and it could be on the verge of a breakout and you know, for people that are just getting into it, like we had a student today who was really upset because they lost a lot of money on uh, this fund. 
which is like this meme stack that you know you can see is like all over the place. And you know, I, I'm never going to tell my students not to buy these meme stocks because you could make a lot of money, but you need to have a plan. And this particular student lost money because they just guessed; they didn't have a plan. You know, why? What is our plan for Chevron? Well, if it's breaking above this, you know, it could be a buy. Um, what is this? So we always want to have a plan, right? We don't want to just guess because if we just guess, we're going to lose money. Oh, I see. I'm looking at the wrong uh, currency here. Uh, the other thing too is if you're trading a stock like Chevron, I mean, you might lose money, but you're not going to get wiped out. It's not going to make a dramatic move lower. Oh, look at that. It just popped up in the, in the aftermarket another few cents. So... Again, I'm sure a lot of the people, um, Rodrigo, are here because they've probably been blown up. Uh, you know, they have they got off to a good start and they got crushed. And I'll tell you right now, for the vast majority of people out there, if that's the case, it's because they didn't have a plan. They just guessed. They just said, all right, I'll buy this, I'll buy that. They didn't have a logical plan. Now, a lot of times you might have a logical plan and it might not work out, but the key is you're, if you have a plan, you are not guessing. And we don't want to guess. Guessing is what loses or what leads us to losing money. Having a plan is, in, um, enforces discipline and the best traders have the discipline to stick to their plans and not let their emotions get involved. And emotions are a really tough thing because if you buy a stock, what's going to happen? You're either going to be looking at a loss or you're going to be looking at a gain. Either one of those is going to inspire emotions. Like if you have a gain, you're going to be like, oh, this is great. I'm making money, blah, 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 blah. I'm, you know, I'm a market guru. You know, so that could mess with your head, right? It could, it could cause you to fall in love with the stock, which is something we call sentimentality. So you buy a stock, it goes up, you're making money. Now you have all of a sudden you love the stock. You tell all your friends, oh, I bought XYZ. I'm making so much money. Well, guess what? Maybe XYZ runs into resistance, gets overbought, breaks its downtrend, and it goes lower. Well, because you love XYZ, you're still sitting with it, and you end up losing money. Had you a disciplined plan and were able to get your emotions out of the process, you could have said, all right, I have a, I have a profit on the stock. It's overbought. It hit resistance, and it broke its uptrend line. Now it's time to sell. So you need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, and it's just like in life too. I mean, you know, I mean, if you're going to drive to the grocery store, you don't just randomly drive on different roads. You know which way you're going to drive, right? So it's like anything in life. If you have a plan, it can work out much better. Um, and like, again, I think a lot of the people that are taking this class or, or interested in this class, I should say, are probably interested because they've lost money before and they don't know what to do. You know, they go on to these chat rooms and they get bad information um, they listen to CNBC, they get more bad information. Students of this class um, learn how, well, at least I try to teach them how to have a plan and have something so we don't just guess. Because if you guess, you know, you might as well just go to the casino, right? At least you can get free drinks. So if you're going to lose money, you know, at least you're getting something out of it. Yeah. And uh, as a retail trader myself, I, you know, this is something that I struggled with as well. Emotions are very hard uh, to control when there's money on the line, especially when there's no foundational education. There's really no guidance into this. And, you know, chasing stocks is not a strategy and guessing and winging it is not a strategy either. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Maybe you can get lucky a couple of times, but eventually you, you really want to be right in the long term and not just try to be right in the short term. But all of this information that you're seeing is basically what we go over in the trading school and we do it case by case. So everything that Mark is teaching you guys in the school is going to be taught with current market examples, basically. So uh, this is something that if you do want to take your trading career to the next level, it's, it's a must, right? There's no uh, logical reason why. Well, the reason is because they want to take big funds 
uh, like brokerages, they want to take retail's money. So what do they do? They come up with this thing called derivatives. So a lot of people start trading options, not knowing what they're doing, not knowing how to read a chart. And it's all that money that you're losing on calls and puts that expire worthless. That all goes into Goldman Sachs or some other brokerages firm. So Mark is saying, you know, go to the casino. I'm telling you, go write a check to Goldman Sachs right away. If you're going to be gambling with options, you might as well make a check out for Goldman Sachs and send it to them. Because there's a reason why you're allowed to get into the market with so much exposure, cash, and no guidance. And we get these people all the time here, Mark, where they, they let us know about um, their situation. Like, hey, I'm down 400 grand and I don't know how to recover. Or I'm down half a mil. I'm down 200 grand. And, you know, it, it's, it's very... Uh, we, we try to help them, obviously, but the system itself, if you do it on your own, it's almost like meant for you to for you to fail. So that's why trading with a community, trading with a group of like minded traders and individuals following Mark Petrino's experience really is what's going to help you get to that next level in trading and learn from mistakes without having to blow up your account. That, and that's coming from experience here. Guy agrees with that. And we're not all so different, guys. We're all retail traders. We're lucky to have Mark Petrino coming from, you know, from big funds that is able to give us the insight from his perspective, from big money's perspective. Ultimately, these people uh, at these funds, they manage, they move the market because they have the money to do that. So thinking like them is going to be the best way for you to be able to be profitable long term, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and I, one of the things I really want to teach in my class is not just, you know, not just about trading, but about all the myths that surround Wall Street and all the misinformation that people, you know, might have out there. Because Wall Street basically tries to make stuff sound complicated so they can charge fees, right? Um, but I would be willing to bet if someone who puts a reasonable amount of time in it, and I don't mean like, you know, you got to spend, dedicate your life to it, but, you know, spend an hour or two a day, like, in the lessons, just learning things, and you'll eventually be able to make your own decisions, and you'll eventually be able to question things. Like when you see all these like so-called gurus on TV, you know, I think you should just shut them off. I mean, you know, gurus are a dime a dozen on Wall Street. Yeah, that's a common mistake for retail traders, Mark. Actually, they'll go follow some YouTube like social media uh, account with you know a bot in cases that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the thing with this class is like, I don't want to just tell you what I do. Right. Because what I do might not be good for you. Like, you know, like Tom Brady is a great quarterback, right? If you made Tom Brady a, a linebacker, would he be good? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Right. You have to do what fits your personality. So if someone is trying to tell you, this is the system to follow you know, it, it, it's not right. It's wrong. You have to follow what is right for you. You know, are you a sprinter? Are you a marathon runner? There's no right or wrong answer. It's just, you have to do what fits your personality. Now, if you're an aggressive personality, who's got a lot of energy and likes to be in and out, well, then you could be a day trader because a buy and hold strategy might bore you. And you might buy a stock and a week later, you're like, oh, I'm bored. Let me blow this thing out. And it could continue to go higher. Um, but someone who is a passive investor might want to make one or two trades a week or a month and, and watch. So I think there's this whole misnomer or this mythology where if someone's trying to sell you a system, you know, based on what they do, it's, it's, it's a waste of money because you got to do what's right for you. Um, you know, another thing is, you know, Rodrigo just mentioned those unfortunate examples of people that lost a hell of a lot of money. I mean, $400,000 is a lot of money. And it's really, uh, you know, upsetting that that's happened, but it's not surprising. So when we talk about the risk management and the risk psychology stuff, we need to never blow up. We could never be in a situation where we should blow up. You should never have all of your eggs in one basket, right? Um, what I tell people is this, a big question I get is, I'm just starting, how much money should I invest? My answer is, invest just enough that if you lose everything, it's not going to ruin your day. That sounds kind of dumb, but here's the thing. 
you're just trying to learn. You're trying to learn about these emotional decisions. Now, I would be willing to bet that someone who has a $400,000 loss, you know, there could be a million things, but they either, you know, tried to average down, they bought something and it kept going lower and lower and lower and they kept buying it. Um, put it this way. It, I mean, if you're trading a hundred million dollars and you lose 400 grand, well, that's just a normal part of the trading. That's like four tenths of 1%. That's the institutional world. But if you're trading, you know, $500,000 and you lose $400,000, uh, that's a really, really bad loss. So this goes back to our risk management. It's, you know, we can't have um, too many assets in one thing. You know, we have to never have a blow up. It's like if you're a golfer, right? You know, I try to play golf. Um, Rodrigo's in Florida. Everyone in Florida plays golf, so he probably does too. But, you know, a lot of times if you play golf, it's not who has the best shots. It's who doesn't hit the terrible shots. If someone just hits a decent shot every hit and they're always in the fairway, you know, they're probably going to end up with a good score. Someone could go out there and, you know, hit a hole in one. But then in the next six holes, if they hit the ball in the water or hit the ball into the woods, they're going to blow up and they're going to have a terrible score at the end of the round. So you need to go into a trade in a lot of ways with a defensive mindset. Don't think like, how much can I make? Think how much can I lose? There's an old saying, and I believe it's true. If you worry about the bad trades, the winning trades will take care of themselves. So this goes into our whole risk management thing. And we talk about how to set um, stop losses, how to get out. Like, I just wanted to bring this up because this is IBM. It's another thing we have um, that we're looking at in the class. So what do we see here? Well. Last time IBM got as oversold as it is now was here in September. And the stock was around 133 and right after that, it rallied. So now IBM blew up. I don't even remember. I guess this was its earnings. Um, it is oversold, but it looks like it stopped going down. So, you know, here's another thing we could put on our radar screen. Stock is really oversold. I don't know if you could really say this is a support level as clearly as we could in the other stocks, but massively oversold. Looks like it stopped going down. And again, I'm not just saying, all right, well, it's oversold, it's gone, stop going down, go ahead and buy it. We need to let IBM tell us what to do. And if IBM, I'm gonna draw in a downtrend line. If IBM crosses this downtrend line here, well, what does that mean? It means that the sellers who pushed it down are done, right? See, it could keep going lower. Say it keeps going lower. Say it stays below this red, which I'm not going to turn to blue. Um, say IBM stays below this blue trend line. This will tell us the bears are still in charge. The stock is moving lower. What happens if it crosses this line? And remember, this isn't mathematics. This isn't some secret system. This is a graphical illustration of what's going on. If you can remember that charts are graphical illustrations of supply and demand dynamics, you will be so far ahead of the vast majority of the trading game. The vast majority of traders look at a chart and they see, oh, here's a pattern, you know, because they saw it in a book somewhere, but they don't know what it means. They don't know what it is they're actually talking about. Now, think about it in a, you know, if you watch football, you know, we just mentioned Tom Brady. If you see the coaches, you know, they write their X's and their O's. So right now the Bears are in charge. So pushing the ball downfield, pushing the ball downfield until this blue trend line gets broken or the stock crosses it, you know, you can assume that this team is still in charge. Once it crosses this line, well, it means what? It means the stock is basically unchanged. So after a few down days, um, say it is here around 127, you know, tomorrow goes to 126, but then it crosses this line and goes back up to 127 or 128. Well, what does that tell us? It tells us there's a good chance the stock is on the way back up. So in this situation, you know, we're not going to guess, we're not going to roll the dice. We're not going to just go buy IBM because it's down. We're going to wait for IBM to tell us what to do. A lot of people have a hard time with this because 
everyone wants to pay the lowest price, right? And say this does break its trend and we buy it at say 129. Well, it's kind of counterintuitive because we could buy it today at 127.60. Well, there's also a chance we could keep going down. So remember what I said, successful trading is not about being right. Forget about being right. It's never gonna be perfect, right? If, just because you go play golf and you don't have a hole in one, it doesn't mean you suck. No, I mean, you, you could have you know, been three under par that day if you birdied every hole in one. But you weren't perfect. You didn't get the hole in one. So let's forget about being right. You, know, you can always leave money on the table. I read a great quote by um, Paul Tudor Jones, who's one of the great money managers of all time. Uh, Paul Tudor Jones. I forget where I read this, but he basically said, you're always going to sell stuff that goes to infinity. You're always going to buy stuff that goes to zero. Of course, he's exaggerating and being hyperbolic, but Paul Tudor Jones is one of the greatest money managers you know, in history, right? So when a guy like that says it, if he can accept the fact that he isn't always going to be right, but he can make money, well, then you as students kind of need to drill that into your head. You know, it's not... um like going back to the golf analogy, there's a, there's an old saying, like, there's no, there's no pictures on a scorecard, <laughs> you know, like you could have the most beautiful swing ever, but if you hit the ball into the woods, you know, whatever, if you have a terrible swing, but you get the ball on the green, you know, whoever gets the ball on the green is going to get a better score. So let's forget about trying to be right. Let's just think about making money. Um, I don't know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really what it is, consistency. But I, I want to take a moment here uh, to congratulate a new member of the family, of the Benzinga family here, uh, Jimboa. Welcome. Welcome to the family here. And it's very important to know, guys, that, you know, this is a teamwork. But let's just give the warm welcome here to Jimboa, guys. <laughs> so, Jimboa, welcome. Welcome and thanks for joining here. Everybody else here that's joining, uh, congratulations here. But Basically, you're just getting a little sneak peek of what we're doing here in the trading school. This is really a sneak peek. We go a lot deeper. Obviously, every class goes on for about the lectures, 45 minutes, 7 a.m. to 7.45. Then lecture review, 7.45 to 9. Then you have a break. You meet again at 12 and you do a recap of the lesson. All of this includes open market discussion. All of this includes real life market examples. All of this includes Q&A's. Uh, questions that you might have, picks that you might want Mark to review, and you always get the, the chat rooms with Mark. On top of all this, remember, you get Benzinga Pro. It is included with the trading school. So as long as you have the trading school, you will have Benzinga Pro. So that way you can find good trade ideas in Pro and you can bring them back to Mark because every uh, a lot of the tickers that make sense, a lot of the tickers that we go over in the workshop, we follow up on that in the trading school chat room like Netflix and a firm is another beautiful one. I don't know if you want to pull up that chart, Mark. Uh, we talked about it at 108 and uh, it broke a very important resistance level and everybody in the trading school uh, did pretty well there. So uh, Matt and Dima are asking, how long is the trading school? So it is for a full year. So it's a full year of pro, full year of the trading school, full year of classes, Monday to Friday. Um, so it's ongoing, you know, it doesn't stop. We keep going. As the market continues to change, as you know, this happens on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. We update the classes and everything is live. All the classes are live. None of this is pre-recorded. That way, once, let's say, we reach one year from today, we're going to have a new class. And that new class is going to be based on the current markets. So, uh, and uh, your other question, Matt, is what happens if you're unavailable um, so if you're unavailable for any of the classes, the good thing is that they're all recorded and they're all uploaded into the actual trading school platform that I showed you guys a couple minutes ago. And uh, that's where you can find all of the recordings. The, the chat room pro is inside there. Everything is there inside the trading school platform. This is for the full year. We do have a 70% off and that is only available until midnight. But the good thing is that you actually keep that discount as a lifetime. So as the price continues to go up to two, three, four, five thousand, you will keep the 70% off regardless of the price of trading school. So that's why, uh, in my opinion, it's a must if you're starting. So um, Geraldine is asking, how long has trading school been around? 
Well, we actually, we've been working on the trading school for many, many months. Uh, as far as when the school has been open officially, we started on September 27th with the first class, uh, the first uh, wave of, en of enrollees. Um, does the class teach you how to set up the purchase and sell of a security, Raphael? Yes, um, that, that, yeah, we do go over that. We do go over a lot more, but yeah, that's one of the things we do go over that. Mark has given out picks and strategies. So uh, AB, let me post the link there for you um, in, the, in the chat on the Zoom. For those on YouTube, I'm going to post the link again because I'm seeing some questions there. Um, and let's go over a couple other questions here. Let's see. Um, not sure how I missed it when I joined. Okay, yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, this is pretty relative, relatively new, you could say. And, you know, it's all about helping you guys as retail traders. Remember, Benzinga is for retail. That's what we stand for. That's who we've been um, working for all this time, giving you guys the best tools, giving you guys the best educators like Mark Petrino. That's why we were able to get this together, packaged and bundled, including Benzinga Pro, which gives you all of the tools. It gives you that market edge, but you need to know what you're looking at and you need to know what you're looking for. And that's why when you use Pro and you're able to use that with the trading school, right? You bring that research you made, you pop it in the trading school chat, Mark is there going over your trades, going over your strategies. So it is a full community. It is really that warm home feeling that many of us retail traders will never experience. But that's why we're changing the game here. And we're bringing you this uh, so that you actually have a community that you can trust, trade around, trade with, make connections, including you know asking for questions on your own trades and strategies. So it's a three-way street. You talk to Mark, Mark talks, talks to you, and you talk with the other uh, community members there, which is a great community. It's a very welcoming environment. It's great for learning. It's not like these public pump and dump chats that have fake accounts and, and bots. Everybody there is a verified trader and it's a verified Benzinga member. Basically, it's no, it's no kid stuff, right? It's not like you go to these public boards and you know how people are there. We're all here focused on, on learning and making money while we do it, put, put simply. So Mark Petrino is a great person to help you as an educator. As you can see, you know, he's, he's very on top of his stuff with the charts. Um, Christopher is asking, do you offer any warranty? Yeah, we do have a seven day money back guarantee. So if you do want to try it out, you have seven days, take it out for a spin. You have seven classes there and you're going to have all of the Q and A's, all of the prior recordings of the prior classes so that you can go ahead and look at everything that we've been doing with the classes. So um, D A B. Yeah, I put the link in there for you to join, AB. Uh, D is asking, do you go into options? Well, I mean, just to clarify, right? Like, if you, the first thing you need to know, right? If you don't know how to read a chart, going into options might be your last market decision. Uh, personally, I blew my account twice when I just went to options and I really didn't know how to read charts. So if you buy the stock, let's say you don't know how to read charts, you'll lose 20, 30%, 40, 50 in some cases. If you do that with options, you will lose a hundred percent of that. So don't rush, don't skip steps. That, that's why they're, I mean, the market is never going to tell you, follow these steps to be a successful trader. It's never going to line up. You know, the stars are never going to line up for you to be the best trader. You kind of have to find a community that helps you and guides you through the process. So the first thing before anybody asks, what is a call and what is a put? You need to be able to properly read a chart and understand the language because it is a language. And the, the faster you can understand it, the better you're going to do. So first thing would be to learn how to read charts. Mark is a CMT, a charter market technician. Basically, that means that you are going to be able to get all of his experience being a charter market technician, managing big funds there, pension funds, small caps, large caps, everything he did uh, with the investors we've mentioned before. So all of that goes into knowing how to read a chart. And that would be the first thing I suggest before jumping into options. But yeah, if you have questions about options, uh, Mark is more than happy to do that. Pat yeah, I mean, we talk about options, cryptos, futures. Yeah, any investment style you have, this class I believe will help you. Yeah, absolutely. Pat Reynolds is saying, "Go Tigers!" Absolutely, man. I'm all in there with <laughs> you. Um, Scott is asking. I think I missed it, but when are the classes conducted throughout the day? Will we see live trades? Yeah. So, all right, three questions there. Let me take it all out at once. So the classes are conducted 
Monday to Friday throughout the whole day. So from 7 a.m. you meet, 7, 7 a.m. to 7.45. Then from 7.45 to 9, you have a break. You meet again at 12, but you also can schedule office hours with Mark. So that's obviously not in, in, in the set schedule because that's when, you know, you, re, you guys request it, but every class has Q and A's and open market discussions. So yeah. And it's flexible too. Uh, you know, it, it, like say we don't have office hours one day and the market crashes. Well, we're going to be online, you know, talking to people. Um, yeah. So I want to be as accessible as I can to everyone, but you know, we, we need to have some kind of a format, but um you know, yeah. it's a it's a very um, active community. A lot of my mindset that goes into this class goes into a business school class I took, you know, 25 years ago when I was in business school. All right. So, you know, they tell me or I remember, you know, what, what do you take for a semester? So I went to two years. So 10 classes a semester. So you take like, you know, 20 classes or whatever. It's like there's one class from my business school I remember really well. And it was my ethics class. And it was taught by a guy by the name of Larry Zicklin, who was a huge, you know, famous Wall Street guy. He's, he's either a philanthropist. He might have passed away by now. But I took all these other classes where they come in with a textbook and you read the textbook and blah, 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 blah. There are classes I don't even remember, right? I mean, maybe I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, but, you know, do you remember what you did 25 years ago? But I had this one class by Larry Zicklin. And he would come in with the Wall Street Journal, which back then people actually had newspapers, and the class would have a circle and he would put the newspaper down and he would say, all right, well, here's a story. Let's talk about it. And it encouraged this like brainstorming thing where people would come up with different ideas. You know, no one was no one was saying, oh, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. And I think the community of this class, like having people talk to each other having ideas exchanged is really in the long run is really, it's what's going to be helpful to people. It, it um, definitely helps. Absolutely. Let me get here to all the, we got 17 questions. I need to right, get cool. to here Let's really quick. Um, so Bon is asking how long is the duration of the enrollment period? So classes last for one year. So if you sign up today, uh, not only do you get the 70% off, you keep it when you renew and it lasts for a full year with Benzinga pro. So you don't have to pay separate for Benzinga pro. It is included. Diz is asking, I already have a membership, but every time I watch Mark, I want to buy another. Okay, that's very, shout out to you, Mark. Definitely people loving your class here. <laughs> is, there, is there any pre-qualification needed for this course? No, but you just need to be hungry to learn. And yes, I, to I learn. would say yes. The, pre, the pre-qualification is you want to learn and not to be told what to do. That's yes. all we ask for. Yes, you have to be hungry. Let us know if you're hungry, okay? Kathy, can we get today's record? Uh, yeah, we're sending it everybody, but uh, only the, the attendees are actually getting that that special price here tonight with us. Uh, is Benzinga the same as Robinhood? No, uh, not at all. Benzinga is the king of news. Uh, Robinhood is a, a brokerage that a lot of retail traders use. Benzinga Pro has its own platform. We have our uh, trading school, which we are obviously going hard on education. We don't want people to blow up their accounts. Um, so yeah, but I mean, totally different companies. Benzinga is not a brokerage. Um, okay. Alvin is asking, okay. Yep. Email me Alvin for the laptop and are the class. Okay. Matt is asking, are the classes mostly based on charting or is there some focus on fundamental analysis? Yeah. So let me just take you guys here to the trading school really quick. Hold up, Mark. Let me just get this, um, get this out of the way. Cause a lot of people are asking about this trading. All right. School. I'm going to go get a new glass of water and, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me get, um, this chart. Um, uh, oh, okay. All right, guys. So I'm showing you the trading school. All right. Let me open the chat because I know you guys are still asking questions. Um, but let me, all right. So you guys are seeing that, right? You see that. And this is the homepage, right? This is where we are the homepage. And you can see this is Monday, October 25th. You have Tuesday, you have Wednesdays, Thursdays. So this gives you like a, like a, you know, a, a general overview of what's going on and what you might be missing and what's happening in the class. You can look back here and you can look at all the other prior dates, but my favorite place is in the video library. So you just go to the video library. Everything is labeled by dates, as you can see. So you have the introduction in philosophy. I know somebody, I think it was Matt, was asking, 
if it's only going to be charting. So it's, I mean, charting is very important, but it's not the only thing we're looking at. So introduction and philosophy to capital markets, obviously having a general understanding of, of the market is fundamental to this. Q&A is always uploaded. We always have Q&As. So if you have questions about the lesson, we have Q&As in the class, but we also have a recap at noon. And if you have more questions, you have the office hours, you have Mark in the chat room, and you have a whole bunch of other uh, like-minded traders that are willing to help you as well. So it's a very tight community. I definitely would would have liked to, you know, have had something like this when I started trading, but there wasn't. So, I mean, if you guys are starting and you guys actually have this available, I mean, take it. It's, it's not only a sweet deal, but it's going to save you from making some really, really silly mistakes that are going to cost you a lot of money. So these are back here to the classes. You can see the office hours of Friday, um, investment strategy and trading system. So this is another chapter, right? And you have different chapters. So you see, Matt, there's, there's definitely a lot more than charting market principles, analysis, and sentiment. You got to know how to read sentiment. This is my favorite one, investment psychology. And you have the midday update when you meet, when you meet momentum, trends, levels. I mean, you have everything here in the video library. If you want to, you know, do a little trading for the day, or talk to Mark, you always have your chat rooms available, right? So in the video library, if I click there, it's basically going to take me to that session, right? We go on the chat rooms, you're going to see everything is popping up there. Charts, if you select here, BZ Pro, it's going to take you straight to Benzinga Pro. Remember that Pro is included in the chat room. So that's always going to be available there for you guys to look at. And, um, this is the chart. Let's wait for Pro to load up there. So basically, this is Benzinga Pro. So you're going to get this included. You have the news feeds, insiders, which is a new tool we just added. You can filter this by keyword, my favorite one. And I'm just going to get, I'm just going to be quick with this, guys. FDA approval. Boom. I get every single PR that has FDA approval there. And I can set up email alerts with this. So, I mean, you can get tons of great trading ideas and bring them back to Mark and you bring them back here to the chat room, to the trading chat room, okay? Everybody here is definitely, we got a Red Sox fan there, so shout out. We got a lot of people here posting their trades, strategies that they're doing, really, really smart conversations that you wanna be a part of. So this is all included guys in the trading school. So. Um, so there you go, Matt. There, that, I just gave you a little quick runaround of what, what the trading school is. Obviously, the live classes, you know, we're not doing live classes right now, but you click live class and it'll take you there when the event is happening. So um, Guy is saying, I'd like to check out some of the class recordings first. Absolutely, Guy. We have a seven-day money-back guarantee period. So if you do want to try it and check out the classes, more than welcome to do that. I'll, I'll post the link there again for you guys. Um, we have a couple more questions here. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. So, yep. Yeah. All right, guys. So that went over to you guy. Put the link there. The times you mentioned Eastern. Yes. All of the times we're talking about are Eastern time. Um, Alexander's asking, are you going to send more info about the test drive and the year long class? Well, uh, no, you'd have to click on the link that we're putting in the chat because the offer is only till midnight with the 70% off. So you, once you click on the link and you join, you get the seven day full money back guarantee so that you can go ahead and go to the prior classes and all that, um, everything that you want to check there, attend the live classes, talk to Mark, you know, take trades from the chat, get opinions on your trades. All of that is, is what the trading school is. It's, it's a strong community. Uh, Alexander. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nav specs for the laptop. So it is a complimentary laptop. We'll be sending a new Google Chromebook to all you guys for joining as a gift. Hopefully that gift will help you guys get set up there with your computer. And what is the difference? Yeah. So Raphael, this is uh, the trading school and it comes with Benzinga Pro. So uh, Benzinga is not a brokerage. Uh, Thinkorswim is. So that, that's the difference. But Thinkorswim gets news from us. So if you want the source, join the class and get pro. That's what I said. John, what is the annual fee for the class? So we have a special right now, 70% off. So it comes out to $12.97 for the year. That is with the discount. So you keep that discount as well. Um, let's see, uh, Johnny, y'all work with Uma. I don't know who that is, Johnny. 
Vikran, can you please show us what typical chat rooms look like? Yeah, so this is the chat room uh, that I was showing over uh, you prior. So it's basic, the chat room is in the trading school. So meaning it is not the one that is in pro because there are some chats in pro, but it's not the one from the, it's different. The one in the trading school is its own. It's not on pro. Um, so Scott is asking, you don't have to be there at 7 a.m. Of course you don't. Uh, the classes are recorded. So if you miss them, you can always take a look at them later. Um, will the videos be available for the length of the membership? Absolutely. The videos will be available and prior videos as well are available for any member. So if you don't understand a video, um, you pretty much reach out to Mark and you set up office hours and it's pretty, you know, open discussion there. We're all talking there all the time. So if you feel uh, like you need help, that's you're not going to have trouble finding help. We have a no trader left behind policy. We're very, very disciplined about that because we care about all of all of y'all's long term success. So, yes, it's not hard to get help. It's probably easy. Uh, and trust me, I've, I've tried different services. I, I, I was looking for things like this many, many years ago, but nothing really stepped up to the game, you know, to what you guys have here with the trading school. Um, so yeah, you can access Mark and, and schedule office hours, Scott, if you need them. Uh, Pat, thanks all for setting up this platform. Looking forward to learning from you guys. Absolutely, glad to have you guys here. Um, Kevin asking what happens if you're already a member of Pro. If you happen to already be a member of Pro, you have to email Rodrigo, you have to contact him. Uh, we'll put the link, the information where you can email him and call him so that he can help you with that. John, yes, Greece is included as well doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can take this lesson. So if you're in Greece, in your, if you are in Central America, if you're in Europe, if you're in Ukraine, it doesn't matter, Canada, everybody can take this class. Uh, Sal is saying that they just signed up. So that's awesome, Sal. All right, we got, we, got to, we got to do it here like we always do, okay? All right, all right. Sal, welcome to the family. You know how it is. <laughs> Love it. Love the energy, guys. Definitely, it's something today, Monday. There's definitely something going on in the air here. So, um, so yes, the typical daily time commitment. So, I mean, this, this commitment question really is one that um, we just have to be real, right? So, like, look, the lecture is 45 minutes per day. Now, there's Q&As, there's open market discussions. So, you can just attend just the lecture if you understand it and follow up with Mark if you have any questions. But here's the thing as well. You talk about commitment. How bad do you really want to become a successful trader? Do you want to do the minimum or do you want to put in the maximum hours that you can so that you can speed up that learning curve, right? So we all have a learning curve for everything. And if you're, if you're putting the minimal amount of time, obviously you're going to get the equivalent of that in your results in trading. The more time and commitment you put into it, the better results you're going to get and the better trader you will be. This applies to anything, not just trading. So yeah, this isn't a one-hit wonder class. This isn't like, you know, learn how to play guitar in two hours. You know, yeah. <laughs> it takes some time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Suhaib is asking, I would like to try to seven. So we have a seven-day money-back guarantee period, Suhaib. So basically, you join in, you, you don't like it. You, and within the seven days, you get your full money back. So that's a, that's the Benzinga guarantee. Um, how many hours a day you you have to commit to learn. So Amy, I mean, if you understand it on the first lecture, you don't, you know, I would always double check and I, and I would always encourage you to be as interactive and as uh, participate as much as you can and engage as much as you can with Mr. Petrino so that that way you can get the, the most value out of this. You know, it's like you you have a, a very, very well-known person from Wall Street a uh, very well-known trader who's traded with legendary investors, I would take every minute I could to listen to Mark and his strategies and get his feedback. So um, it's up to you, but I'm telling you from like personal advice and like hoping you the best, uh, listen to the people that have experience in the market that have been doing this for 20, 30 years that have traded with the, with the best traders and investors that are known to mankind pretty much. So follow that crowd, right? Follow somebody that knows what they're doing and somebody that really cares about your long-term success. So uh, Nav is saying Mark's personality is very amicable. Must be a pleasure learning from him. Thanks for the lesson. <laughs> well, I mean, you could, if you let my wife know that, I'd appreciate it. 
<laughs> so yeah i mean mark is pretty he's down to earth man what can i say i've met a lot i know a lot of people from wall street money managers and but i can tell you that like mark has a certain thing to him he likes he's passionate about education he's passionate about helping you guys become better traders and you know he's very passionate about it i can tell you for sure that you know not a lot of people on wall street are that nice and helpful so um take advantage of it while you have it here especially with the discount so in YouTube, they're asking if we can ship laptops to Canada. Yeah, we've sent out laptops all over, all around. So um, after the seventh day, we'll be sending you out a form, Lila. So, you know, just sign up, go ahead, and then, you know, we'll take care of that um, after the seven-day money-back period. Uh, Queen, Kath, what, if, what about those in Africa? Uh, can they join the class? If, are, you in, are you in Africa, Queen? We'll definitely see if we can get you one there. Um, but as far as you joining... Yes, of course. Join. Go ahead. Tell all your friends. Tell your neighbors. The Benzinga Trading School is live, and we're here to help every trader around the world, which is consistent with our mission as a company. We want to help retail traders get ahead. We know that the overall market wasn't really stacked in your favor, so we're trying to give you guys an, an, an edge. We're trying to give you guys uh, an actual edge in the market and in your way of thinking when it comes to trading. So Ronan says, I've signed up for a class, but I work a full-time job also. That's great. A lot of people that sign up do have full-time jobs and it works best for them because they, it's look, it's like going to the university to learn a, a, you know, a career, right? This is a career. This is not a side gig. This is not a hobby. This is not a, a, a casino. Don't look at it that way. This is a full on education for trading to help you as a retail trader. And there's a lot of, a lot of people, individual investors that I've signed up that actually do manage money. Um, but that's because Mark's following Mark's background in wall street. A lot of people, you know, listen to him and know where he's been. So, um, so yeah, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, I'm getting the sense from a couple of these questions that people think like, if they're not on real time, that they're not going to be able to benefit, yeah. but that's not the case at all. It's, you know, it's very rare that I'm ever going to say, buy it now, sell it now. This is not how it works. So just because you can't get on like during the trading days, it doesn't mean you're not going to learn, uh, you know, yeah. stuff afterwards. So, like I said, this isn't a one hit wonder class. This isn't a like learn how to play guitar in two hours. So if you can't be on during real time, like meaning while the markets are open, you know, I don't even that even that think that should be a, a consideration um, because the fundamentals we talk about, you know, carry over. So, yeah. And I know people that trade crypto futures, even cotton, and they're using your lessons to trade because this applies to all of that. It applies, it applies to trading anything because at the end of the day, it's people behind that computer that are clicking that buy and sell and that there are real human beings. Obviously there's, there's algos as well, but it seems to, to be that if you're consistent with your trades, if you're more right than wrong, you will be able to be successful with this because otherwise, if you want to go the the Wall Street, you know, go to Wall Street bets, go to Reddit, go to Twitter and, and get your trading plan from there, you're in for a roller coaster. And we don't want you guys to be gambling with your savings. We don't want you to be gambling with your money that you work so hard to earn. We want you to be able to put that money to work and actually profit from it. Don't just fall into these pump and dumps that you'll see on, on Twitter like every single day. You need to trade with a strategy, with a plan. And trading meme stocks is not a, like a strategy I would recommend. That's why it's very important to understand the market because you'll be able to make informed financial decisions instead of somebody else making them for you, which means that you're going to pretty much lose money. But we've had a lot of people join here and I'm pretty excited about it, Mark. So... Um, Let's go back to the charts here, um, to what we were going over. I think it was a firm, what you had. Go ahead and take over the, the All screen right. share. All right, let me go back to a firm. Shout out to Lori joining. Oh, thanks, Lori. All right, so let's just look at F, a firm. Yeah, I mean this this broke this um resistance. So uh you know it's it's made a move higher. But here's what I want our students to uh or potential students to focus on. Sometimes a particular stock or sector can give insight into which way the market is gonna go, right? It's like 
by analyzing what's underneath the hood, you can kind of get insight into where the rest of the market is going to go. So if there was one chart I was going to focus focus on, and I, you know, I will be, but if there's one chart someone should focus on to get insight into, is the market going to rally? Is the market going to sell off? I would watch this Microsoft because obviously Microsoft is an important company. It's like, I think it's the second biggest company after um, Apple in the, in the, uh, in the weighting of the S&P 500. So here is a little um, thing to look at going forward, right? Now we talked about how in bullish markets or in rallies, we have seller's remorse, right? People sell, the market goes higher, people regret doing it, so they try to buy the stock back. So here we have Microsoft. I'll go to year to date here. Just give us some perspective. So this is Microsoft here today. Um, back in January, you could have bought it for 215. Now it's trading about 230. So don't regret like not buying it. That's that's the past. But what I would say is if you want to get some insight into which way the market is going to go, let's watch this Microsoft. And this is something I spoke about in our class this morning. So remember how in rallies, we have seller's remorse. So people sold here. They thought they made a good call. The stock went higher. Now it's above it. What would be a positive development for Microsoft? What would be bullish for the broader markets? Well, if this re level that was resistance turned into support, that would be bullish. So Microsoft made a huge move. So now it's consolidating. There's some profit taking. Not a big deal. It should be expected after a move like this. So this 305 level was resistance. Today's low trade was 306, right? So we're close enough. So over the next few days, I am going to be watching this Microsoft. If this level becomes support, in other words, if Microsoft comes here, finds some support, and then moves higher, that's bullish for the broader markets. If Microsoft breaks this level, meaning it goes below it, in other words, if this former resistance does not become support, that could be bearish for the broader markets. So here we go. We're watching one particular stock, Microsoft, which is obviously a very important. And we're looking for a simple thing here. Does this resistance convert into support? It kind of has. One of the problem, one of the difficult things about the market is you need to have patience. You know, it, nothing really ever plays out in one day or two days. Sometimes it does, but you have to have patience. So patience, and, that, that's what I, what retail traders have a less of, I've noticed. Yeah, dude, it's, it, but it's hard. You know, it's hard, Rodrigo. It's hard because yeah. you got your money involved. You get this narrow focus. It's a hard thing. And that's why it's so difficult to do. That's and that's why our students are here. That's the investment psychology class. That's why it's my favorite because it, it definitely, I feel our psychology sometimes betrays us sometimes by being impatient. You know, one of the, the most inter interesting things about psychology is that we have this herd mentality, okay? Like you might think, a, well, people don't wear ties anymore, but you might think like, you know, a shirt is a good looking shirt. Well, why do you think it's a good looking shirt? I don't know. Did society tell you that? Do you think it's good looking shirt sure, because everyone else thought that? Was it told to you? I mean, look at the way people dressed in Shakespearean days or the revolution. Well, you know, the herd mentality told them, well, that that was a good thing to do. That's the right thing to do. Like think about football or any sport. You can be in a bar or a restaurant, you know, wearing your jersey of your favorite team. Someone else comes in and they have a jersey of the same team. All of a sudden, you feel this like bond with them, right? I mean, you throw a Rodrigo a one if you feel this. Um, but it happens all the time. It's, this is this herd mentality. We talked about this uh, in one of our lessons, and our students brought up various things. 
where do you see herd mentality in today, into the day and day, every thing of your life? Well, someone brought up a good thing about say you're driving down the highway and you come up to a toll booth, right? Everyone has seen this. So you're driving down the highway, you come up to a toll booth, you see there's a huge line coming out of one toll booth. So you just instinctively get online, or a lot of people just instinctively get on that line. But if you could separate yourself from the <coughs> from the crowd and look around, you might see, well, gee, I could drive up there like past 50 cars because this toll booth has, you know, their um, you know, their um, you know, their thing on where you could just drive through, like your easy pass or whatever. So we see this in everyday examples. You're driving down the highway, you come to a toll booth, everyone's going to one side, you feel this instinct to go to that side. Well, if you did that, guess what? You're going to spend 20 minutes or half an hour waiting in line to get to the toll booth. The people that were able to disassociate from them, themselves from the crowd and say, hey, maybe all these hundreds and hundreds of people are wrong. You know, maybe that toll booth up there that has the green light on that says easy pass is a way for me to go. So you bypass the traffic, you drive through the easy pass tall, and you keep going. And at that point, a bunch of other people see you going through, so they follow it too. So, you know, Rodrigo talks about investment psychology, and I, in my opinion, that's my most, I think that's the most important thing too. But you can see these herd mentalities and these instincts we have every day. Like if you're driving down and you see a toll, right? The people that, who are going to be the successful traders? The ones that follow the herd and spend three hours or the ones that say, I'm going to think away from the herd. I'm going to go around the crowd. I'm going to go up to that toll booth where no one's waiting and I'm going to drive right through. <coughs> so this is like an example in everyday life where you can see herd mentality. That same herd mentality is what makes people lose money so i guess i'm digressing there i don't know where i went off on my little tangent but um i would say over the next few days let's watch this microsoft we have a level that was clearly resistance and if it comes support which it looks like it has there's a good chance the market keeps moving on so let's watch this microsoft chart and obviously if you have any questions and you're in the class you can um, we look at oil. Oil keeps moving higher. Yeah, and oil is that's a long play that we've had. MRO is one that the one that I was actually in once you gave that call. Um, what about the financials? I know you've definitely touched on the financials. They're they're they've been on a tear um, as well. Well, what we do is part of the process for the class is we screen the sectors in the S and P five hundred. There's 11 different sectors. So we look through the sectors. And then if we see an, a sector idea that looks good, we apply it to individual stocks. So this is the financial sector. This is XLF. So we can see here, let me just get rid of this stuff. Easier to read. Now, you don't need to be a market guru to see that this 39 level was important. So we hit resistance, we hit resistance. XLF ends up breaking through. Now this gives us a clue. I mean, you could trade XLF. A lot of our students have traded XLF. But this also gives us a sign. It's like, all right, well, the financial sector is breaking out. Let's explore stocks in the financial sector. I know a lot of our students like penny stocks. So by going through a lot of the stocks in the sector, I was able to find this, this Genworth as a penny stock, right? I know people like penny stocks. <coughs> Believe it or not, I'm old enough to remember when a penny stock actually traded for pennies, but now it's anything um, below five. But anyway, so we see financials are breaking out. We do a screen of our stocks. We find this Genworth, which is a financial. And it broke out, you know, and it went from 42.28 or 4.28 to 
you know, 4.5. I mean, it doesn't look like a big move on a chart, but if you're an options trader, you could have made a big, a big, um, big profit there. So we look for ideas by a top-down approach sometimes, meaning we'll look at a commodity. We'll look at oil. Oil is ripping higher. You're an investor, but you don't invest in oil. So let's look for oil stocks. We see that here. Um, natural gas is ripping higher. Well, you don't know, trade futures. We look at natural gas stocks. So, you know, the thing is, is what we have to do is this. We don't, we can't guess. The Most, most people fail because they're trying to guess. They just want to get lucky. But you need to have a plan. And if you have a plan, that's going to help you. And if you have a plan that's actually based on the market, you're going to be helped even more. All right. So here we see Genworth. We saw XL, um, the XLVs that put us into the uh, healthcare sector. Let's go over the, well, we went over financials, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to go over transports? I know that you mentioned there was some relation to transports and, and another um, another indicator. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but I know that you use the transports for certain things. Well, one of the things I like to do, Rodrigo, is that, you know, going back to my class example, when I was in business school, is a brainstorming event. So what's going on in the news or what everyone knows about is this um, supply chain problems. We have all these ships uh, docked off of LA. So as a brainstorming session, and I'm not saying we have a right answer, but this is something where all the students come together and we start thinking, all right, what is going on with the supply chain? Which companies are going to benefit? Because some company will always benefit. It doesn't matter how bad things are. There's someone out there that will benefit from it. So we're looking at the supply chains. All right, we have ships stocked offshore. What are potential ideas? You know, these are some of the things the students have thrown at me. Well, if we have less stuff being on trucks, is more stuff on planes. Um, if stuff is docked offshore, do produce or food or, you know, certain goods get spoiled? Will there be insurance claims? Um, you know, why is the chart of UPS so much better than FedEx when UPS and FedEx should have similar businesses? You know, so I'm going to just, and again, now we're just brainstorming. I'm just speaking free from. So we look at this UPS chart and the stock is totally rallied, right? It's broke this resistance. Oops. You know, and it's higher. Why is UPS doing so much better than FedEx? Which we looked at before. So I am not ready to give you the answer. I don't know. But one of the things I enjoy about this class is the whole exchange of information. Like, for example, we have some students that are in Hawaii that were giving us insight into like, you know, the freighter ships that moved out. Um, we have students that, uh, you know, one of their children is a union worker on the docks and we got insight from them. So I think by this brainstorming, just by the free, you know, the free exchange of ideas, not worrying like, oh, I'm wrong or am I right? We can kind of come up with ideas. Um, so from the brainstorming sessions, we started talking about railroads, right? It's the power of the community, of the Benzinga community. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. It's like, it's so, you know, it's really cool because there, you know, if there are things that anyone would miss, right? But if you have this community and this exchange of ideas, and it's not an environment where people are competitive. It's not like someone's like, oh, I'm not going to share my idea because I don't want anyone else to take it from me. You know, th that's not what we're about. And that's not how the real world works anyway. But anyway, um, so I wanna bring up, um, you know, we were talking about the railroads. So let's bring up CNP.
Eh, I can't find it. Where the hell is it? No, it's not center point energy. It's Canadian. I think it was Canadian. All right, so we were brainstorming about what companies could do well because of the supply chain crisis. Some of the students said, all right, well, you know, let's, let's look at railroads, right? You know, if there's a, a, a shortage of shippers and a shortage of truckers, maybe more stuff gets put on railroads. So this is CNP or CP is a symbol. This was Canadian Pacific Railway. So right around here, you know, the students brought this up and we started talking about it. And this 75 level was resistance here and here and here, but it looks like we just got above it. Now we see some consolidation and now will 75 become support? Well, remember, seller's remorse. Investors sold it, the stock goes down. The stock rallies and it's above where they sold it. All of a sudden, these sellers that they thought, thought they did such a great job regret their decision to sell. So what they do is they place their buy orders out there. They don't want to pay more than they sold it at. So they place their buy orders at the same price that they sold. So now we have a situation where the stock is testing what was a former resistance level. It could become support. If this support holds, I think there's a good chance the uptrend continues. So this is not something I came up with. I didn't just say, oh, hey, everyone, let's look at Canadian Pacific Railway. This was a kind of an open discussion where I said to the students, right, let's brainstorm. What could, what could help us here? Like, we got supply chains going. There's always a way to make money out of any situation, no matter how bad it seems. You know, there's always something out there. Like I, um, you know, I had my first trading job with Mario Gabelli. I remember him telling me when he first hired me, I don't know if it was him or someone he worked with, but, you know, looking for these ideas that are kind of out of the box. Well, anyway, back then it was, you know, going, going back to the easy pass, like in the early eighties, they first invented easy pass. So Gabelli, being the genius he is, said, oh, easy pass, there's a new thing. And he had his analyst look into it. And I think that they found some company that makes a little component for easy pass, you know, this little widget or whatever. No one would have thought of it, but there was this little company somewhere that was about to benefit and they invested in it and they made like this huge, big amount of money. So like that, you know, comes from the brainstorming. Here we have Canadian Pacific, you know, it's above this resistance level. Will this level become support? If so, it could move ahead. You know, so this was not on my radar screen. This is something these students brought up and now we're all following it. So it's a very, um, you know, the class, Rodrigo, is not just me, like talking about how great I am, because I'm not, but the class is about, you know, let's try to come up with ideas. Let's try to get on the same page. Um, and let's just brainstorm because like I said, you could be Tom Brady, you could be a great quarterback, but you're not going to be a great safety. You have to do what works for you and your personality. Yeah. And it all falls down under basically treating trading as a career, right? Not as a, as a hobby. This is not like just reading a book and hanging out in the beach. This is something that look, I mean, billionaire funds are, are do this, right? So as a retail trader, you basically have to work your way up to become a successful long-term profitable day trader or swing trader or op, whatever it is that you uh, want to do. But the first thing is to actually understand the fundamentals of the market. And like Mark is saying, the community, the power of a community, of an educated community, I must say, is a lot more powerful than a community of, you know, let's say... Like you go to Wall Street bets, like 99% of those trades uh, tank. So the, we're, that's not what we're doing here, obviously. We're here trying to give you educated tra trades with smart hypothesis results. And basically, we're looking at the market with experience in our favor. We have somebody that's traded within the biggest firms out there and all sorts of you know stocks that you can imagine. Basically, this is like the best 
way to start as a trader, right? If I would have, if I would start, if my first day in trading would be today, I would join the trading school and I would try to talk to Mark as much as I can. I would attend the classes every day. If I miss it, I'll watch the recording. I have, I'll schedule office hours. I will try to learn as much as I can because I understand the person that I have in front of me. I understand that this is somebody that can really help me a lot and help you learn. You got to understand it's not just about making money. It's about knowing why and how you made that money because you want to be able to repeat that process on and on. And basically remember that if you don't have an education, you're going to fall into the emotional trading. There's no way around it. If you don't have no trade, no training, there's no, there, there's nothing that you will fall back on besides your emotions. And that's really not, I mean, if you haven't paid attention to what we've been talking about all this time, you can't let emotions guide your trades. You need to have a set plan and strategy. And that's what we're doing here. Uh, with Mark Petrino. Uh, Amy's asked, oh, by the way, thanks for joining, Amy. Uh, congratulations on joining the trading school. It's very awesome. Uh, and I mean, we're going over part of it now, but I just want to make sure that I can give you a very warm Bilzinga welcome. <laughs> all right, all thanks, right. Amy. <laughs> um, Aomi is asking, do you have a three, six month membership? No, so it's only for the year. We only have an annual membership here. It We have to do it annually so that you can cover all of the topics and make sure that you really learn this and you actually give yourself a chance. Remember, you're competing when you're trading stocks, you are in a competition. There is somebody on the other side of the trade who thinks they know more than you. That's the person selling you the stock or the option or whatnot. So in many cases, you will even be competing with billionaire funds. And if you don't give yourself the chance, because like funds invest millions of dollars in their education, millions, tens of millions. So if you if if you really want to give yourself a chance, you have to get, I mean, the best tool out there, and that would be Benzinga Pro, and then the best mentor to help you digest and process that information and show you and teach you the ropes of trading and you know, market analytics, mark, equilibrium trading, all of these things that really make you a complete trader. That's why you have the education there. So to me, it's probably the best deal that you can find out there ever uh, because the other option is just really not the way you want to go. And I'm talking to you as a trader today, okay? I'm a trader. I'm, I'm an individual trader. I was a trader before I joined Benzinga. I love trading. I, I love the markets. And to me, it's very interesting and I like it. And that's kind of the attitude you want to have if you want to be successful in trading. You need to be hungry for the knowledge and hungry to learn it so that you can actually, you know, profit from it and not just be one of the 90% of retail traders that get washed up. So that's why that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, yes, here is asking does pro have scanners. And if so, yeah, we have the pro has the only scanner that's open pre market actually pre market and after hours. And just as a reminder, Benzinga pro is included in the trading school forever. So as long as you have the trading school, you will have Benzinga pro. So um, yeah, just wanted to, to at least answer those can you send the laptop details? Avril, uh, yeah, just uh, it's going to be a Google Chromebook. It's a new Chromebook. But yeah, we've gone over several of these questions already, but just want to make sure we get to everybody. Uh, Mark, what what, um, what are you most excited about in the trading school? Like what, what are some things that you've noticed there that, that you might want to tell people that, you know, want to join or are on the fence? You maybe? know what? I, what, it, what excites me or what I'm in, enthusiastic about is students that actually want to learn. You know, people that ask, ask good questions, um, people that are humble. You know, we get some like kind of know-it-alls in the in the you know lessons that are you know they may try to stump me like oh well what do you think of this derivative blah blah blah. You know, we I just want students that want to learn. You know, I want people that want to learn, and it seems like we're doing kind of a good job weeding the people out. You know, if you're looking for someone to give you trading ideas, this is not the place. If you're looking for someone to teach you how to develop your own trading ideas, this is the place. So what I'm excited about, Rodrigo, is that I think we've kind of filled a, uh, you know, not a trading term, but a gap. But, um, you know, we're putting something out there that is not elsewhere. You know, most right. trading places want to teach you, here's our system. 
you should do this. This is great. What I want to teach you is you need to do what is right for you. So what I'm excited about so far is that we have students that actually seem to get it. You know, if you want to, if you want me to feed you fish, yeah, all right, you could have a fish and then move on. You know, you're here to learn how to fish on your own. So that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited that we have students that are eager to learn. And frankly, these students that are so eager, they're kind of shocked when they realize how simple it is. Well, you know, like they've missed so much. Well, you make it look simple. Let's just be clear. You make it look simple because you've been doing it for 25 years, but. Well, if you, if you follow <laughs> logic and common sense, it, it should be simple, right? You know, it's like, um, you know, we don't need to do higher mathematics or this or that or the other thing. It's like, you know, think about going to a store, right? Say you want to buy, you know, I have, I have uh, kids and I don't know, the last friggin' iPhone thing or whatever the hell it was. You know, it's like, all right, well, we went to this store, they didn't have it. We went to that store, they didn't have it. You know, so we go to a mother store and finally they have it. What, happ what happens? Well, we pay a higher price. Well, if you can understand that, if you can understand that there's a shortage of supply, so people need to pay higher prices, you can make money in the stock market. You know, you don't need to be a genius. You just need to understand supply and demand dynamics. Yeah, and uh, I'll say the power of the community is that really being able to bring all these pieces together. And, you know, the one thing I have noticed is that a lot of there's a lot of misinformation out there, Mark. There's a lot of new traders that, you know, they saw a YouTuber talk about XYZ thing and now they, they think they're, you know, they're Wall Street professionals. That's what and, makes me mo so motivated, Robert. You know, yeah. I see like, Paul, you know, I mean, I could have just like been like, all right, well, whatever. I'm just going to retire and play golf. But I see all these ads like, oh, you know, sign up for this class and you're going to be this genius or blah, blah, blah. And frankly, it actually physically upsets me. I think, you know, for the, maybe there are young. some it's, promoters it's, out there that, you know, typical young guys. I mean, that, but that's what, you know, being young has its advantages and its disadvantages. <laughs> I'd, I'd say, well, being, Rodrigo, as an older guy, I wish I was <laughs> again, but that's another conversation. But the experience is really what, what I'm saying. Like, because a lot of people, what happens is that they go to YouTube, they, they listen to some little YouTuber or some social media guy, and then they, they think this is the way, right? They, the famous, this is the way. But then they realize that that's not how it is. That's not the way. And, they have to unlearn all that garbage that they've been taken in for years. That's not true. Right. Like conspiracies on the market, you know, a typical kind of stuff that you'll see on wall street bets. And um, it, it, but it's part of a process. So like, as if you are very young and you're trying to get into trading, my honest opinion guys is to just, you know, be humble to people that have been doing this for decades, managing billions of dollars because there's no comparison but, you know, it's all about learning. And that's part of the process. Right, Mark? So people right. Dude, and, and like the other thing is, is we're learning through cycles. Like already we've seen a cycle, um, you know, for the students that just started, you know, a month ago. Right. Like we were we were looking at the S&P 500, um, you know, during our. Um, during our workshops or whatever, uh, the. Um, webinars, let me show you this trend that we looked at. And, you know, this is not, you know, I'm not lying. You can document this by listening to the calls. But we saw this uptrend, right? Look at this up. This is the SPY. This is the S&P 500. So we saw this uptrend, you know, clear. You don't need to be a market guru to see this. So in the middle of September, around when we had another webinar, um after the oil one we talked about this you know and then the break of this trend line told us we were going to have a big move lower you know now of course we've recovered but um you know i think by seeing stuff in real time and real market application is really the key because you can go read books until you're you know blue in, in whatever the expression is it's like i said before about boxing you know, you could you could do I don't know you, you know you could watch the Rocky movies you could drink raw eggs you could be able to do a thousand push-ups you know but until you get in the ring with Apollo Creed or Clubber Lang my 
favorite Rocky movie is Rocky three. It's another aside. You know, you're not really going to learn. You got to you got to get in there and you got to really see what's going on. That's what I like about this class is because we're talking about what's really happening in real time and what's really going on in the markets. It's not like, oh, gee, last, you know, last October, I made a great call. Yeah, well, everyone makes a great call if, you know, they have the benefit of hindsight. So that's what excites me about the class, Rodrigo. We have students that are eager to learn. And we're talking about this stuff in real time. Yeah, that's so, the biggest benefit for sure. Yeah. But you have the the issue with, and look, I mean, I'm also a fell victim to this. Like everybody and everybody's dog made money in 2020. It was the easiest market to make money. It was just no, almost impossible to lose. You could have bought the TQQQ at 30, 40. I got that at 40. I mean, it's, it's had a split, but you could buy anything at that point and make money. And now all of the retail traders from 2020 have been washed out because the market changed, right? So a lot of people might think that the market as it is right now, it's going to be like that forever. And uh, what do you have to say about the market changing and, and really why it's important to have that ongoing education, Mark? Well, you know, the big thing is, is what you're talking about is the, um, the risk management. Big part of the problem is sentimentality. People buy a stock, it goes up. They think it's easy. They hold on to the stock. You know, it's, it's like really similar to dating, right? If someone's in a bad relationship, you know, they, um, they meet someone for the first two months, it's great, or the first few months, you know, they're in love, blah, blah, blah. But then things get bad and maybe one of them is abusive or one of, them, one of the people is a liar. But people cling to it because they want to, they want it to be like it was at the beginning. And as people like me who've been married for 19 years, you know, or other people out there know that that's just not how it works. It's the same thing with stocks. Like you might buy a stock and the thing makes you money. So you fall in love with it. But, you know, when the thing breaks its uptrend or when you get a, um, you know, a a signal that it's going to go lower, it's like you got to get rid of the the zero and find a new hero you know so you know we need to understand how to going back to it's like you need to make money you know we're not here for entertainment although making money is entertainment but if you get attached to stuff or you let your emotions rule the day you're not gonna make money making money is cool and we can get emotional when it happens but you need to be able to disassociate yourself from these positions and understand like it's not going to be perfect. If you make money on a position, that's great. If you didn't catch the perfect bottom or the perfect high, that's irrelevant. Who the hell cares? Just don't watch the chart, watch your bank account at that point. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, actually somebody did mention that in the comments, Mark, they were talking about, I lost 50% because I fell in love with the stock. And that's one of the first lessons I learned. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. Stop trying to learn these lessons and blowing up your account while you do that. There, that is why we have the trading school so that you don't have to learn by blowing up your account, losing 50%. And that wasn't even options. If we're talking about options, that's, that's an account that it's gone. So being able to actually take the emotions out. And honestly, I feel it all comes back to that <laughs> psychology class. But Dude, hey, there's guys, no doubt, like that particular person you just mentioned, like if they bought the stock, why did they hold on to it? You know, do they have a logical reason for holding on it? And I mean, you know, I'm not putting this person down because all investors face this and this is why we have the class. But someone buys the stock and it goes down and they're just watching the quote. They don't really have a plan. They don't, they don't know. They're just watching the tape. You know, it goes down, it goes up. Had they a plan, well, we have this defined stop out strategy or whatever, you know, they wouldn't have had to deal with that. So, you know, if you're guessing you're doing it wrong, Rodrigo, yeah. you know, we need to tell our students, like, you need to have a plan. Sometimes the plan doesn't work out, but if you have a plan that doesn't work out in the long run, you're still going to be better off than if you just guessed, because if you have a plan that doesn't work out, you're probably only going to lose a little bit of money, right? Whereas if you're just guessing, you know, you know, you could just kiss your money goodbye. 
You're just going to, you're going to watch it go down. You're going to hope it comes back. And the vast majority of the times, it just doesn't work that way. That's not how the market works. Yeah. Some people don't know that. And they kind of want to experience it by themselves because they think that they are, you know, Paul Tudor Jones. And that's kind of what's enticing to some people, but they don't read the, the print. You know, they don't, they don't read the small letters on the print that Paul Tudor Jones has a plan, you know, and Paul Tudor Jones has lost money on lots of his trades, but he's successful because he has a plan and over the long run, he's stuck to it. And he's accepted the fact that losses are part of the process. Babe Ruth has more strikeouts than any baseball player in history. Yet he's still the greatest baseball player that there is. So if you come into this thinking, I'm never going to lose money. Yeah, for sure. You you know, you need to accept the fact that you're going to lose, but your losses, you need to cut them out and you need to let your winners run. Now it's easier said than done, but it's the same thing that investors have been facing basically since there's been investing. So this is one of the things we talk about in our investment psychology class. And actually, since we're talking about uh, Mr. Jones, I, I've looked into his biography. Actually, he blew up his account twice and he was thinking about quitting. And his dad told him, like, you know, find some safe investments. And then Paul Tudor Jones said, no, I'm going to I'm going to stick with it and I'm going to trade my way. And look at him now. He's obviously a billionaire, but um, it, it pretty much comes down to having discipline, right? Having a strategy. And a lot of the things that you are talking about, Mark, he is very adamant about those as well. So it seems like, well, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, it's the he's same got strategy, billions, a billion dollars more than I do, but yeah, it's the, you know, it's, it's the, training, the same though. thing. You it's know. the training you get at, at that institution is what I'm saying. Like when you trade among the greatest traders out there, you learn to trade like them and you become in essence, a part of that. And it's because all the points you're talking about, Paul Tudor Jones also mentions them as far as like becoming a better trader. So it, it yeah, really like when has I was trading for yeah. Steve Cohen, you know, even to this day, when people find out, oh, you traded for Steve Cohen, you know, they think that Steve Cohen's got some great, you know, secret strategy that, you know, is mints money, you know, on every trade. It doesn't happen. That's not how it works. Like Steve Cohen is a phenomenal trader because he understands risk management like when i worked for him i remember people would call up you know from the wall street journal and they you know would interview him as a matter of fact i think when i was working there it was the first wall street journal he'd given interview he'd given like eight years and the reporter was like well do you use this strategy do you do use that strategy and it's almost like steve like got like annoyed after 20 minutes like it's like dude i don't have a secret system you know you're like oh do you use this do you moving average cross or break up He's like, there is no great system. It's risk management. It's risk psychology. And Steve Cohen is a multi, multi multi-billionaire who basically started with nothing. So I guess my final takeaway now is as we're ending the class is that there is no great secret. The secret is using a style that fits you and understanding risk management and investment psychology. Now, there is no one hit wonder. There is no like, all right, I'm going to pay for this class for, you know, I'm going to take two hours of guitar lessons. I'm going to be Jimmy Hendrix. It just doesn't work that way in the real world. So I think if you sign up for our class, you know, don't expect like after a week or two to like be like, oh, this is a great thing, blah, 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 blah. And you're going to go out there and be, you know, a zillionaire. I think if you stay with us for a few months or whatever, and we go through a couple of different micro market cycles. You're really going to learn how to develop your own systems. And again, we're not here to tell you what to do. We are here to teach you how to do what works right for you. So I don't know if that's too hyperbolic, but you know that's what I really believe in. Right. And I mean, to be honest, it's we do want to set proper expectations because I mean, I go back to this because it's just it's kind of like something that's poisoned the market a bit, I'd say, like when people go on Wall Street bets and they're looking at, you know, 10,000 percent gainers or they're <laughs> looking at all these things and they come in with those expectations. And a lot of those things are Photoshop, guys. So like 
we need to, we, we want you guys to be successful, but if you make 50, 70%, a hundred percent a year in your portfolio, and you're upset about that, you know, you, you need to have a reality check because those things you're looking at wall street bets, big majority of people, all of them that, that, you know, make that crazy number, which is fake. They're very likely to lose it the next day. So if you don't know why you made money, what makes you think that you're going to keep it? Eventually it will go back to where it belongs. And that's probably going to be a smarter trader. So that's why you have to be the smarter trader. Remember, this is a competition. It's not, it's not charity work. You need to make educated trades and you, you have to do that consistently. So it's not, it's, it sounds easy, sounds very easy, but it's not that easy once you have to put it into place. So that's why we want you guys to learn and be around that community because that's going to help you being around a community that helps you instead of trying to figure it out on yourself, falling into what I call vacuum trading, because, you know, it, it vacuum trading is very dangerous. You're going to be on your own trading in a, in a room with a bunch of screens and, you know, little noises and, and alerts here and there. You're going to go crazy. You need to find a community that you can trade with that, that actually cares about you. So that, that's what Mark is talking about, the community here. And, um, and yeah, I'll post the link for you guys that are asking about the, how to join in the chat. All right, cool, everyone. I got to sign off, but I, I just want to leave us with one thought. Um, and, and just before, right before that, guys, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to show you the trading school and I'll be answering some questions as well once, Mark's, uh, once Mark takes off here for the... For right, so, so this is my one kind of thing to leave here, here with. You're not competing against the market. You're competing against yourself right? Like when it comes to yourself, there should be no negotiation. Don't worry about the market. Don't worry. Like I made more money than this guy or, or this other guy. It's like golf, right? In golf, you're not competing against the other person. I mean, you are, if you're playing for money, but you're really competing against yourself. And if you make a mistake, figure out what you did wrong. Like, for example, we have a student that was very upset today because she lost a lot of money on fun. Well, why did she lose money? Well, she just guessed. She didn't have a plan. You know, she just rolled the dice. You know, I don't know what whatever the hell happened with fun, but she lost money. So remember, like this is, think about yourself in an incubator or, you know, think about yourself just in a room. You're not competing against other people. You're not competing against the market. Who the F cares what other people are doing or what the market is doing? All you need to care about is your account and do you make more money in that than you take out? You know, you, you might be wrong, but you take a small loss. You're right, you let it run. You know, you're ahead. So, you know, don't think about this like I'm competing against the market. Don't think about this like I gotta be better than the next person. Just focus on yourself and focus on your bank account. And just remember, it's not about being right. It's about making money. I know that seems a little complicated, but, you know, work, think about that for a few days or so. And all of a sudden you're going to understand like a good principle. And I think that's going to help you move on to the next level. Okay. Well, definitely love those remarks. Mark, uh, definitely interesting and glad to have you here with the trading school. Uh, everybody say thank you to Mark Petrino for taking the time out of his day and his classes to come here, help you guys with the education, give you guys some pointers, some smart pointers, right? And some good direction and guidance that I feel a lot of retail traders really need here. And then we kind of need a little kick in the head sometimes to, to understand, you know, really all this. So Mark, definitely been great. Pleasure having you here. We're definitely, when we'll be doing this again, because it looks like a lot of people love it. Look, all these people saying, thank you. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Rodrigo, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, happy to be teaching people. I want to teach people. Um, so yeah. So tomorrow morning's class is on levels and um, I guess we'll just take it from there. So, sounds good. Yep. All right. Sounds all right, good. everyone. Have a good night. Now I got to go to my other job, you know, wife, kids, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. All right. But I'll check you out in the morning. Thanks, Rodrigo. Thanks, everyone. Sounds good. All right, guys. I'm going to share here with you um, the trading school because a lot of you guys seems like you still have questions. So if you, all right, I think everybody can see that there um, in the chat. 
give me a one in the chat if you can see the trading school right now. If you can see the screen where I'm pretty much, okay, all right, seems like we got a couple of people there. Everybody can see the chat, okay. So I just wanna do a quick rundown here because a lot of you guys uh, seem to you know, wanna know how to use this platform. It's very simple, it's very simple. This is the homepage where I'm clicking and you're going to have basically all of the, like an overview, right? You know, like when you have your portal, when you go like to college or whatever it is, you have like a portal that gives you an overview of all of the classes you have upcoming and the prior classes. Obviously this is way better because you actually get the recordings of the class, including the Q and A. So you don't have to go to class or anything like that. And people from all over the world join. It's very simple to use, very easy. And we have a lot of people inside Benzinga as well that do like to try it out. And I don't blame them. I mean, Mark Petrino is somebody you do want to learn from. That's somebody that you do need to make a little part of your brain out you know, like give him some attention there. So if we go over here, you're going to see in the home, you have every single class there, right? Every single class is recorded there. All of the classes, investment strategy, trading systems, market principles, analysis, sentiment. This is my favorite one. If you, if you have to go to one class during, during, well, I'd say the charting is important one. The chart classes are important, the trends and the momentum, but personally, my favorite one is the investment psychology because it takes you to where really none of us have ever been inside the mind of a money manager and how they approach the market from their perspective. So here's where you can find here, as you can see, upcoming events, October 25th, and everything is there pretty much laid out. If you wanna join the live class, you just click on live class. And whenever the class actually begins, you're gonna be able to sign up here. So in the video library right here where I clicked, that's where you're going to be able to find all of the systems, all the classes, market principles, analysis, and sentiment. These are from October 20th. This is from the 21st. As you can see, they're all labeled, which is very you know, easy to kind of scroll through them and see the one you want to watch. The most recent investment psychology one was on October 19th. And um, you can watch them. So Raphael is asking, how many times can you take the same class? So there's no limit. There's no limit to this. I know that different places might, like you know, you'll only be able to take it once, and you got to pay again if you want to take it again. So we're not doing that here. You pay one time, and you get access to all of the material. There's no need to pay for anything else or anything of that nature. It's all included there um, for you. So Raphael, you can take them as many times as you want, and obviously there are eight chapters. And you're going to be going through all those eight chapters within two weeks. And then on the following two weeks, you will build up on that and you will continue to build up on the, on the topics, on the subjects, on all of the information, because the market is moving uh, all the time and it changes all the time. So we have to stay up to date with current market trends. Um, John, thank you again. I need to sleep. Okay. All right, John, but remember to go to class tomorrow or watch the recording. Okay. That you're excused. Um, so yeah, this is the trading school, what you're looking at here. It's my favorite place to hang around when I have free time. And something I like to do here is that I go to the chat rooms and I'll just get picks from here that uh, Mark is going over. <laughs> He's basically talking about trades on that. So that's something that I'll, that I'll do you know, here and there. But keep in mind, guys, um, the trading school comes with Benzinga Pro. So I showed you a little trick I do here, um, but also it's really just the, the, be the beauty of seeing Benzinga Pro here. As you can see, you have your news there. You have all of your information here, quotes, company industry, short float, um, earnings, balance sheets, shareholders, ownership. You have a brief description of the company. You can see their homepage if you want to. And you know this applies to any stock that you want to look at. You know We want to look at DWAC. Um, you want to see at like what's going on, why the stock is moving. You know, you can look at the chart and you can also look at the news as well, right? So you can see here, Shamath Palihapitiya calls Trump's back, huge vote against censorship. So, I mean, you'll basically get everything that is out there. So if Shamath tweets something about a certain stock and it moves the stock, you will hear about it, right? And you will hear about it in pro. It's the best place to get your news. It's the, you have a live Squawk Radio here, Squawk Options, and you have Squawk Equity. 
So basically, if you want to have a radio, kind of like a radio, but we have somebody, a real person, actually going over, reading the tape, reading you the tape before it comes out many times in, in, in many places. So I would really look into the squawk. Some people, when they're at work, all they do is they plug in their headphones and they just let the squawk run. And they're listening. Instead of listening to music or, you know, Beyonce, whatever you guys listen to, you're going to be actually listening to financial news, right? That moves markets and you stay on top of the game. That's what you have to do. Um, it, it helps a lot for sure. And you have a cool calendar here. I use this a lot. I feel it's pretty underrated for all you can do with the calendar, just because you can always take a look into the future and all that stuff. So um, I think the, the calendar is an amazing, amazing tool. And you build your watch list there as well, right? You build your watch list and you can also filter. Oops, I opened four watch lists. But you can filter your news feeds that I showed you earlier by your watch list so that you only get the news that you want and you're not wasting time. So this is a little touch of pro. Obviously, there's a lot more I can delve into here. But um, the, the main goal here, guys, is for you to know that the trading school includes Benzinga Pro. The trading school gives you everything that you need as a trader to pretty much be successful because you're going to have all of these things that you do need to be successful. And remember, it's a lifelong process. Trading is really not something that you can pick up today and be a beast tomorrow. Just like everything in life, it takes time, dedication, commitment, and effort uh, to, be act to actually be successful at anything. So keep it in mind that Benzinga is for retail and really how we you know, work really hard to give you guys these great services. Consider this, right? Your future self in one year or two years from today, possibly uh, having lost a lot of money in the market. If your future self would be able to tell you anything, it would be to do yourself a favor and get the education because you can't educate yourself. You can't teach yourself how to be a rocket scientist in one day. A lot of people don't can't afford to blow up their account one time or two times or three times. A lot of people can't afford to lose half of their account. So um, it, it really comes down to how much are you willing to, to gamble it with no education and, and continue to do it? Because if, you know, if that's the way, then, you know, you will learn and you'll learn the way that involves losing money, sometimes blowing up your account. And there's no point in, in learning a lesson by blowing up your account because that could just take you out permanently of the market. So uh, let's, we do have some questions here. Let's get over to this. So Aomi is asking if I do live trading or do you do live trading? Mark uh, gives out trades in the chat room. And since the classes are live, you know, we'll be going over current market examples. As far as being action, actionable or not, that I'm going to leave it to you in the class to talk to Mark about if that would be an actionable trade idea or not. Uh, and, that, and that happens pretty often. It's, it, it's pretty normal, actually. So um, let's see. Barbara is asking. I don't know what the TC200 is, Barbara, but send me an email and we can talk further on that because I don't know exactly what you're referring to. And uh, thanks for the producer there, Harvey, for putting in the link in the chat. So Queen Kath, for me to be able to access to these teachings, do I need to register? Yeah, you need to. Yes, this is a trading school. It's only for for members of the trading school. And yes, once you're signed up and once you join, you'll be part of the community. You'll be trading with us. You'll be learning with us. You'll be attending the classes, office hours, Q and A's. And it's pretty fun. We talk about trades and we talk about the markets. It's a great environment to learn. I, I don't think there is a better environment to learn where, where, we, where, where the company actually specifically is making it a great environment to learn. Like we, we really try to make you the center of attention where whatever you need, we can help you with. We have a policy to not leave no traders left behind. And, and we apply it every day to everything that we do as an organization and everything that you're seeing here, the trading school, you know, there's a lot of developers and coders, shout out to Vin, uh, shout out to Neil, uh, who've been working really hard on bringing you guys these tools we know all the coders, all the developers. And inside Benzinga Pro, we have hundreds of writers around the world so that basically you can actually get the fastest news out there. So uh, that's something that I do want to give a shout out because it's definitely, it didn't happen overnight and bringing you guys this is, is great. It feels great. Um, so yeah, Barbara, just email me, okay? And if, you, if any of you guys have a nine to five and you think you might not be able to get the, the value of this just because of that, I promise you, 
like it's the total opposite. A lot of people that join, they have full-time jobs, nine to fives, and they still make time for it because just like an education, just like a, a career that you want, you need to make time for that. Okay. Um, all right. I'll post the link here, Barbara. One second. Um, no worries. Just give me a quick second and I'll post it up there. But yeah, all right. All right, Barbara, that's the link. Uh, you can email me there. But guys, you definitely want to take your trading seriously. Stop, you know, not try to wing it. That doesn't work. I tried it, literally tried it many times. Sometimes you win, many times you will lose. Um, let's see if we have any questions here. All right, all right. YouTube chat has been really great. Um, all right. So guys, this is going to expire at midnight. This is not going to be available tomorrow. The only way that you can get this deal is if you call the number that is in the chat or if you email the email that's in the chat, or you can click on the link in the YouTube description, or you can just click it on the chat that we have it there. Those are the only ways you can get the deal. It will expire at midnight. You do keep the discount if you actually you know, renew because this is an ongoing educational workshop. This is an ongoing school. It's not going to stop. We don't have like, you know, summer off or anything like that. We don't have like 20 day holidays, like typical school does. We're out here working every single day, giving you guys trade ideas, giving you guys education that is going to help you become a better trader. So we're taking it pretty seriously. We're very passionate about helping you guys. So um, yeah, absolutely. So guys, if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the chat. Uh, Queen, once I join, I will be able to join the class and the same do. So I'm not understanding the question, Queen. If possible, guys, turn your chat settings to everyone, not just to the host and panelists so that everybody can see your questions. Um, so Queen Kath, once I join, yeah. So once you join Catherine, you'll be able to go over all of the classes, all of the Q and A's, all of that information. It's all inside the trading school that I'm showing you. If you, I'll go here one more time here, video library. All right. And I'm clicking there and then you can see that. All right. We can go to this prior class. I didn't want to click on that, but all right, there you go. Friday office hours. Okay. I'm giving you a sneak peek. And, you, and if you're looking, so so basically, this was a one hour, forty minute office hour session that we did. Okay, okay, all right. So um, we're going to basically do that every day. That's what we do every day. And this is just one of the classes, of course. But you can always go back to the video library. So guys, we have to we have to keep in mind. All right. We have to keep in mind that as a trader, you're going to have a lot of things thrown your way. You're going to have a lot of news and a lot of things happening around you. And you're going to want to trade everything because, you, you know, you're going to th you think that's the way. Right. But the real way is to make smart trades, not it's quality over quantity. OK, once you once you get that in your head, it, things are going to be a lot easier for you to be able to narrow out the noise, ignore the noise, focus on on stocks that actually have a balance sheet, actually have revenue. Um, I know that speculative stocks are fun, but you know, long-term wealth was not created with, 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 with these types of strategies. You know, I mean, you could be one in a lucky trader and, and like, I mean, I've gotten 11 baggers with SPRT calls and, but that's not something that happens every day. It's happened once a year and you can't really trade. Like you're looking for that kind of upside every time because, you know, you, you might lose it all again the next day. Right. So you have to be careful about the way you trade guys. So, um, so I'm going to wrap up the stream here, guys. If nobody else has any other questions about the trading school, let me know. And there's a couple questions here that you guys are sending me as Q and A's or as private questions. So I'm, I'm going, I'm going to address these questions, but feel free to put them on the everyone, put them on the everyone. So that way, we can all look at your questions, okay? So someone is asking, uh, I'm a new trader. I lost $150,000 on meme stocks and I want to try something different. Okay, so Chanel, um, 
all right. Def, so definitely you're doing the right thing by joining the trading school, Chanel. I would definitely think this is probably going to be the biggest turning point in your trading career because, you know, without education, we really are only guessing. That, that's really what we're doing. We might want to think we're not because we saw a little YouTube video there, but truth of the matter is it's not as easy as it sounds. And that's why having a mentor like Mark is going to help you change things around and don't feel discouraged Chanel because I know people that have lost, you know, similar or higher amounts and they come back, they bounce back, right? They bounce back harder because they now have the knowledge to be able to successfully trade and be profitable in the long term, which is really what we want. It's better to be right in the long term than to be right in the short term. And that requires a little bit more work. And that's why we do that work with you guys with Mark Petrino. So good question, Chanel. If you guys have other, okay, Amy is asking, what time is the live class? All right, guys, so we're gonna go over this here uh, with you guys. The live class, the, the classes are Monday to Friday, okay? Monday to Thursday, you're going over the class. You have a different chapter every day, right? Eight chapters total. And then on Friday, you do a recap of all of those four chapters. And then the next week, the same, same thing, right? Monday to Thursday, a chapter each day, and then Friday recap and so forth. So every lesson that we do have builds on, on the prior lessons and so forth. So it's something that it doesn't matter if you're just, if you're trading options or if you're trading crypto, or if you're trading futures, you're trading Forex, penny stocks, whatever. These are the fundamentals of the market that you need to know and get by with. So uh, good question, Chanel. Absolutely. Um, oh, Amy. Yeah, good question there. Uh, Barbara is saying, I really want to focus in on options. I'm spending a large money already on options, education, crypto education. I'm concerned. About yeah. So like, here's the thing, Barbara, you could get all that education in one single, uh, I mean, with the trading school, because everything that we are talking about applies to crypto, applies to options, applies. I mean, you know, I just went over this as far as trading options, you really, you out of everybody else needs to know how to read charts and read that language and the language and be able to understand the language and dance with it so that you are going to be more comfortable placing your trades and have a higher success rate. Not knowing how to read a chart and trading options is the recipe to blowing up your account. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've already spent a concern. Yeah. So I get where you're coming from, Barbara. I mean, you see, there's a lot of things out there that really promise you a lot of things uh, and they promise you the world. But when it comes down to it, you know, we want you to be successful in the long term. Benzinga, we, we've been with retail for over 20 years. So what I really would suggest is to um, because this class covers everything. It does cover everything that you need because what it, it's all coming. It's all coming down to the fundamentals of knowing how to read charts. If you don't know how to read a chart and you buy a call stock drops 15%, your call is worthless, okay? Your, your call is worthless and you don't want that. You can blow up your account very quickly with that if you don't know how to read a chart. So if you're doing it with options, you're risking, you're risking it, but you're risking losing everything. You're risking losing everything if you don't know how to read a chart and you're trading options. If you're trading stock, you're risking losing 50%, 60%, 40%. But the goal is to know what you're doing and being able to read what is in front of you properly. You see, for the untrained eye, you might just look at a chart that's going up and down and up and down. But for somebody that's been doing this for 20, 30 years, managing billions of dollars at hedge funds, they look at things and they're, they're going to see things that you will not because they have a trained eye. It's like, you know, if your dad is, a, is let's say your mom's a doctor, right? And your mom's doing surgery. How would she know what she's looking at? without any training. Do you know like what I'm saying with that? Like you, you kind of need to know what you're looking at to be able to properly make decisions. You need to go through it if you want to get to it, right? You need to actually go through the motions and know what it takes so that you can actually get to where you want to go with trading. I, I hope that makes a little bit of sense, uh, Barbara. But, you know, it happens. But definitely the trading school is going to cover everything that you have in those two, three services, um, which is, you know, we want to we want to help you guys. And absolutely. So I don't see any. Well, I think there's a couple more questions here, um, but make sure you put your questions at everyone, guys, so everybody else can read it. Um, so Joe is asking, um, does this include Benzinga Pro 
And okay, yeah, so this does include Benzinga Pro. And he says, okay, so just saying I was gonna buy it for three thousand two thousand dollars, but this is a better, yeah, this is a better deal than just buying Pro Joe, absolutely, uh, because it does give you the trading school with it, and uh, it, it's pretty much meant for you to use them together. So, good question. Um, there's another question here by Tim. Tim is asking, what happens if I'm miss if I am not able to attend the classes? So if you don't, if you're not able to attend the classes for any reason, let's say if you have to go to work or you have to go to school or whatever, well, you know, like university or whatever, all the classes are recorded so that they're all there for you. That's what I have there in the trading school. Uh, it, it, what you're looking at right now, I click on video library and it takes me here to where we are and you'll see all the Q and a sessions. So you will have all of the Q and a sessions recorded. Even if you're not able to attend the classes, you always get the recordings which is good because you know we have we all have busy lives and we can't always keep a steady schedule but keeping in mind we have to prioritize what matters and education matters it, it always matters um educating yourself it's the best investment you can do investing in yourself is by far the best investment you can do in life so invest in yourself invest in your trading strategy trade with the community that cares about you trade with the best community out there trade with the professional like Mark, a real money manager that's well known in Wall Street, somebody that knows what they're doing, somebody that's managed over a billion, somebody that's been reading charts professionally as a CMT for over two decades. That is who I would learn from. That is who I would be following when it comes to learning. So guys, I wanna say thank you for joining. Thank you for being with us here today. We're going to finish here the workshop here in a minute or two. And I want to thank everybody for being here. I know you guys are very busy working and trading and giving us a little time of your day to, to help you guys uh, be able to find some things or pointers that that's all we care about. You know, like personally, if I'm able to save one person from blowing up their account, that makes me happy. Just one person, right? Because that could, that could have been me when I blew up my account, right? So like, I want to, to make these sessions as helpful, as educational as possible so that we can all learn together, so that we can all basically work together, become better traders and, and you know, not being afraid to ask questions. You know, I know if you ask a question in a public in a public chat room, you know what response you're going to get. But talking to Mark Petrino, talking to other like minded traders that want to get ahead, that want to become better traders, that want to learn how to trade options, but they know they have to learn how to read charts before they do that. So it's it even trading, it has a plan. You have a you're going to have a daily plan. You're going to have a weekly plan, a weekly trading strategy, but you need to have an actual plan on how you're going to approach trading. And and the way that you do that is you focus on 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 the fundamentals which are basically reading charts and analyzing charts, doing professional chart analysis. That's something that you can't learn on YouTube. You have to be a CMT, a certified licensed chartered market technician to do that. And when Mark joined, there were only like 200. So these are the people that invented all these cute little indicators that you guys use. People were doing it, doing it pen and paper back in the day. So if you want to learn from somebody, I highly suggest that you start listening to people that have been there, that have done it, that are, you know, Wall Street verified, want to call it that. But, uh, but yeah, it's definitely would be my, my, my suggestion if you guys are starting. If you're starting to trade, don't jump into try to trade an option without knowing how to properly read a chart, without understanding how markets work, because there's a lot of fine print that they don't tell you when you open an account to trade. And it's all in the fine print, right? That's really where they get you. It's all about the fine print and, and the fine print. They're going to make it as hard as possible for you to find it. And that's why we are basically giving you guys the fine print so that you can go around the fine print and trade along with it. So don't be surprised when something happens in the market because nobody told you. Right. But that's what we're doing here. We're trying to educate traders on all of the participants of the market, on all of how these interactions happen with the market, how bonds, rates, yields, uh, oil, Bitcoin the dollar, the euro, everything, how all of these things interact with each other, natural gas, all these things interact with each other and they, and they have a movement in the market. So being able to spot trends and understand how economies work, it, it just, it's going to give you a good sense. It's like taking an advanced course on economics and like, you know, finance and all that stuff.
And I took a couple of like advanced economic courses and I can tell you it's very similar to the stock market uh, as far as like the data that you're analyzing. It's, it's very similar. So um, guys, it's, it's been a pleasure here being with you guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time. We're going to let the stream here run a little bit for you guys. But if you have questions about the trading school or any questions that you have that I can help you with, let me know. And, you know, you can always reach me here if you have questions about maybe how the trading school can benefit you, because I know we all have different trading backgrounds. So if you do have questions on that, you know, feel free to call me, uh, Amy, asking if you can watch this webinar again. Um, yeah, if you're, if you are here in the webinar today, look, today's webinar, today's workshop was insane. It was, it's been awesome. I've loved it a lot. There's a lot of education that was going on and I hope you took what I took away from it. Uh, I took a lot out of this, of listening to Mark and listening to you guys here uh, on the chat and what you guys are saying. So, um, so yes, today's, today was, is a special session and everybody that registered will get it. Okay, everybody that registered here for the presentation will get it. So yes, today was an amazing session. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to be stepping back a little bit here because I have some people I do have to call. And anything else, Amy, you're happy. I'm 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 pumped up too. I'm gonna go watch this again right now. Um, but yes, if you have questions, contact me, email me. We're gonna leave the stream running here for a bit. I'm just going to leave my information there. And of course, um, oh, Queen, you're talking about the link to join. Okay, I'm gonna send, put that link here in one second. And then we're gonna have our grand finale. Okay, Queen, let me know if you get that. And okay, all right, I put the link in there, guys. So um, I hope all you guys have been having a fun time. And we are going to leave the session here running a little bit. So that if you guys have any questions, I mean, you can still be in the chat, but I highly recommend to call Rodrigo or email Rodrigo if you have questions about the trading school. And we are going to go ahead now and take the stream off in a little bit, but feel free to call if you have any questions, guys. So thanks for joining. Thanks for being part of the community. Thanks for trading with us. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate all the work you put into coming here. So. Have a great day, guys, and we'll see you in the next time.
Thank <laughs> you. 